Speedway, the paperclip, the smallest track on our circuit. The Sunday Night NASCAR Xfinity Series brought to you by Stacy Strong is ready to go all of these laps, 500 of them tonight, here at our shortest track on the circuit. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Martinsville, Virginia, as we get ready to rock and roll here. All of a sudden, the points are starting to come alive, the teams are starting to come together, and we're ready to rock. I'm Dave Regal, alongside my partner in crime, my good friend, Mr. Matt Mettler, as we're here in the Tony Trapas Memorial Broadcast booth and we'll be with you every step of the way. From the green flag to the checkered flag right here on Sim Racing Media. And I'll tell you what, this is one of those nights, Matt, where I can't wait until that green flag drops. That's right. Haven't you heard big things come in small packages? Couldn't be said more about this racetrack is I can't wait to see who can keep their, their grip at the paperclip 400 miles here in primetime live on SRM 
These boys are ready to rock and roll. The fans on the YouTube side of things, they're locked and ready to rock, and so am I. I'm fired up, ready to get this thing kicked off as well, Dave. Yeah, it has been an exciting week so far here in, in the real world. Of course, today's Real Life Cup Series just concluding. Last week when we were over at Richmond, another uh, Virginia short track, Andrew Dyson brought home the checkered flag. And I'll tell you what, even after Patrick Gitter took that, that pole position during qualifying, it, it, it amounted to nearly nothing because Dyson was just out there sucking it all up like a vacuum. Yeah, there was Dyson and then everyone else. And it's hard to even fathom as good as the competition is here in the Stacy Strong Cup Series. But he really uh, showcased his abilities on the short track. But now we transition to Martinsville. This track is a little bit different. You don't have the banking in the corners. You have uh, concrete. Uh, that's the preferred line around this place. But then you have the asphalt on the outside. And then you have that curbing, which can wreak havoc. So I want to see what Dyson has in store tonight, or does another person, another name in the Stacey Strong Cup Series, get their first victory of the season here at Martinsville, Virginia, when all is said and done? Yeah, we have a lot of multiple race winners so far this season in our standings, and as we pull up some of these point standings, at least, uh, you know, here before we get into, of course, our points themselves, Matt DiCiani already a pair on the season, get her the same way. Pearson, Root, and Dyson all with single wins this season as we come here into week number eight. So the question is, does somebody else add their name to that win list or does Dyson go back to back tonight here at, Virgin at uh, Martinsville? Yeah. Not a problem. Thank you, Dave Regal. Of course, myself, Matt Mettler here with you guys as well. As we are now into that qualifying session, about five minutes and 15 seconds through, Patrick Gitter, no surprise in the 21. He's like the new front row Joe Nemechek of the 90s and early 2000s as he's sitting there on the uh, preliminary pole. Um, qualifying is not over. Somebody can knock him off. However, as we look through the amount of drivers that have put up a time, you have the few drivers that typically like to start from the back and work their way towards the front. The likes of Godzilla, Rick Jett in the 77, Chris Davis in the 74, Matt Mackin, always sporting the old one, John Wilco and Richard Pruitt. So 33 cars have taken time here this evening as we continue to roll on through that qualifying session tonight. Again, I want to thank everyone for joining us here live on SRM. You have it set to the right YouTube dial. Now make sure you come on home to your number one esports sim racing provider right here on SRM. Six nights of high octane, high flying racing action. It's simple to join the cause. Smash the like button, ring the bell. You'll get all the notifications each and every time SRM is live right here on YouTube. Again, Gitter continues to hold that pole position. Matt DeCiani in the 14. He's currently slotted in that second place position. Bobby Anderson with a strong lap here this evening in qualifying. Uh, coming in at a 19-14. Neil Pearson right there in the top five. He is always in the conversation, it seems, no matter what track uh, we've been through so far or been at so far this season. And you can argue the same case for Matt Log in the 97 ride as he sits in sixth. As I said earlier, this track is small, but don't underestimate it. It can pack a punch and it can pick, it can come up and bite you in a second. As Dave Regal now rejoins me up here in the SRM booth. Dave, welcome back. 33 drivers have laid down qualifying times tonight. Rich Jett, Chris Davis, Matt Mack, and John Wilco, and Richard Pruitt have opted not to do so so far. Let's take a look, first of all, at our race info tonight. Of course, as I had mentioned, in our open 500 total laps, the scheduled distance tonight, driver's going to have eight total tire sets, so laying seven, and of course, starting with one. Stage one going to conclude at the end of lap number 80, and stage two going to end at the uh, conclusion of lap number 180. And then, of course, 220 laps to the end of that particular nightmare. Sorry, 320 laps. For those of us that can't math properly, you'll have to forgive me for being slightly out of breath. As uh, we look at the track temperature here during 
uh, qualifying 102 degrees on the asphalt and that concrete strip. And Matt, not sure if you touched on this while I was away from the microphone, but that concrete strip is going to wreak havoc for some of these drivers. I did briefly touch on that concrete strip. And then don't forget about the curbing there on the inside. That's actually uh, elevated concrete. And if you get up on there, that can really upset the balance of the race car, make it do some weird things, come off that corner awkwardly and uh, potentially cause a big one. Uh, typically, that looks to happen out of turn four. So we'll have to keep our eyes on that as well, Dave. Yeah, and, you know, I mean, here's the thing. These drivers are going to have to get into some kind of rhythm. A short track in the first place is a rhythm track, and to turn this many laps for a distance of, of just 250 miles is, you know, going to be exhausting. We saw that earlier in today's race. They had an incredibly long green flag run in Stage 3 that just left some of these drivers gasping for air. And I'll tell you what, though, who's not gasping for air, it's these drivers here atop the pile in our point standings as we get that up here on screen individual point standings for these drivers as the uh, stands aren't really full yet for uh qualifying as uh, matt dicciani leading the way by just 11 points over sean rogers so things pretty tight here at the top then four wide motorsports very own nolan hodgson with 227 so a big gap between second and third as we get rolling here, Chris Davis with 196. Eric Papineau from Ironman rounding out the top 10 there with 178 points. You know, we see a couple of these drivers that are looking from the outside in right now if the playoffs were to start today. And those drivers, at this point in the season, I don't think they have a whole lot to worry about. You know, there's still plenty of time before the playoffs even begin to be a factor. Yeah, the last thing you want to do is panic, Dave. Sorry to cut you off there, but you're 100% correct. Just be patient. Keep hitting your marks, and, uh, you know, good things will come. You know, you don't want to be that team to sit there and prematurely hit that caution button because we've seen what that can do over the course of history and just completely unravel you as a whole. And oftentimes, if that does happen, you're on the outside looking in when it comes playoff time. Yeah, and, you know, another thing that we, of course, keep track of here in this league is the team championship standings. And team championship standings is, is a big deal, especially, you know, for those chartered teams here in the league. And uh, right now, TCS, uh, TCSP E10 Esports leading the way with 748 points. I mean, holy crap, that puts them in their own stratosphere right now. As Ironman Motorsports with 545 is 203 points way behind them. DGR at 542. I mean, the free agents, as many drivers as there are in that particular group, you know, they're going to be a factor, you know, deeper in here. But unfortunately, it's just a it's just a number at this point, more so than a team. Yeah, I mean, the free agent list alone is you know, some big time names in this series. I mean, take RJ Root, for example. He's almost either feast or famine, win or not make the race at times. And that's just what happens in modern NASCAR when you're not on a charter. So that those uh, you cannot sleep on those uh, free agents. 100 percent agree with you. And of course, the graphics want to get stuck at the top of the screen. Why not? As we try to get ourselves loaded back in here. And while Dave's working on that warm-up now in place out here on the racetrack, driver's last opportunity to make any final tweaks, adjustments to their rides before we strap up for 400 miles. Yeah, going to get a chance here to take, quick, to take a quick peek at our qualifying order. Patrick Gitter nails another qualifying run tonight as uh, he, of course, is going to sit on top of the pole tonight. On that pylon, he's going to be followed by Matt DiCiani on the outside, Bobby Anderson, Neil Pearson, Matt Long. There's a lot of names up here. The one that, that i got to keep an eye on, especially when it comes to aggression, is when we're looking at Kavaja Holt. Kavaja is an incredibly talented driver, but uh, it's that discipline and that patience that run thin with him. Right, and if you look at the warm-up times, he is number two on the board. So you're 100% you're correct. Ton of talent knows how to get the job done, but does Martinsville grind him down to the point where he makes a mental mistake and takes himself out of the race? Only time will tell. Yeah, Randall Watkins, Jeff Carson, Rich Jet, John Wilco, and Matt Mackin did not lay a, lap uh, lay a qualifying lap down 
unfortunately, due to space here in the server, they will still make the race as uh, just 38 drivers going to be taking the green flag. So as it is. So just enough here as we get uh, rocking and rolling. Want to take a quick chance here and see if we can get a hold of Patrick Gitter, who's going to sit here on the pole position tonight. Hey, Patrick, it's Dave and Matt up in the broadcast booth. You got us. 10-4, gotcha. Hey, man, listen, it, you know, here's here we are coming into another week where you decide to uh, go ahead and get that uh, that pole position. What are you thinking coming into the shortest track on the circuit? Yeah, I think uh, strategy first off is just uh, keep it clean until about 100 to go, and then uh, we'll see what position we're in and uh, how hard we want to race from there. Yeah, I mean, you know, here you sit fourth right now in, uh, in warm-up with just about a minute left. How does the car feel, and, and what kind of a, a, an adjustment are you thinking about making right before we drop into the race session itself? Yeah, I mean, I think it's feeling pretty good so far. I like it. I mean, we've got solid uh, rotation on entry, drive-off on exit, which is what you want here at Martinsville. Um, I think... Depending on the track temp, if it cools off some, we might make some adjustments um, whenever we hit the stages, things like that. Try to stay ahead of whatever uh, temperature swings we might see. Yeah, I mean, right now, as far as temperature goes on the track, it's already it's it's already at 102 degrees. That's only going to tighten up as we go deeper into this race. Of course, you know, the race going green at uh, 3 p.m. Uh, sim time. So, it, you know probably in toward that uh, that set the end of the second stage as we get ready for three we're going to see a drastic track swing yeah i think i think so um and you know i think at a track like this it's it's you know i think people separate themselves from one just being clean make the end but two is i mean you could have a bad car for three quarters of the race but if you make a good swing at it in pit road and you make some moves on the start, you know, you can put yourself in a decent spot at the end. All right, my friend. Well, listen, speaking of the start, we're going to get you uh, all gridded up here. So load into the cockpit, and we'll see you maybe on the other side. Tim Poor, appreciate it, guys. Well, Matt, there's Patrick Gitter, of course, our pole sitter. We're, Gitter is the pole sitter. I'm, I'm using that tonight. Yeah, Gitter is the sitter. I was saying earlier, he's like the new modern-day front row Joe uh, for back in the golden era of NASCAR, it seems like no matter where we go, Gitter is always getting it done when it in qualifying. Matt DeCiani's, you know, usually right there as well. And in fact, as we look through the top five, top ten, there's a lot of names in inside of uh, those ten positions that we're starting to see a pattern. Who's up there contending when it counts? You know, talking about drivers like Matt DeCiani, Bobby Anderson. Uh, Matt Long, Neil Person, as this field now begins to grid out there on the racetrack. As we're looking here at row number three, row three is going to feature Neil Pearson and Matt Long. Dylan Banks and Paul Hill in row number four, while Sean Rogers and Nolan Hodgson going to be in row five, rounding out your top ten. Kavaja Holt and Randy Bell going to be in row number 11. I'm sorry, row six, as I'm looking at 11th place. Diego Rodriguez and Kavaja Holt back here in the double zero. Row 7 going to feature Michael Witt and Noah Hamilton, while Row 8 is going to house Seba Cornez and Noah Hamilton. Eric Papineau and Dalton Mobley going to be starting in uh, 17th and uh, 16th and 17th, respectively, with Chad Sanner starting in 18th. Tane Hodison and Mark Johnston in row number 10 with Chris Custer and Ken Ron at 11. Row, four, uh, row 12 going to be Ron Fitting and Ken, uh, Ken Ron. Well, now it's starting to switch around as Alex Prince and... And Tyler Sexton going to be in row 13. 14 going to feature Michael Peterson and Chris Claude with Alexander Gangler and Ethan Eckert in row 15. Brian Tarnowski and Chris Davis in row 16. Randall Watkins, John Wilco, Rich Jett, Matt Mackin, and Richard Pruitt all going to be starting shotgun on the field. 500 laps. The scheduled distance tonight is the iRacing.com pace car. Leads us down the back chute into turn number three as we're here at Martinsville Speedway. Dave Regal. And Matt Bettler with you here on the call. The only thing that's left to do is it's time to wipe the visor and adjust the five-point harness. Grandma, grab a hot dog, get that grandfather clock set, 
race fans, it's showtime! Hail Mary, Bullock Race, let these boys put on a race tonight. It's green flag in the air, and we're already side by side up here at the front. In fact, it is two by two for the foreseeable all the way back to the end of the train, it seems right now here at Martinsville. Working our way here on lap number one, it looks like Patrick Gitter and Matt DeCiani are going to be duking it out pretty early here as, oh, Gitter just caught some of that, and here we are under our first caution. Gitter caught a little bit of that inside curb as it looks like Alexander Gangler and Tyler Sexton may have bought the big one here as we go to the replay. Yeah, that was a weird uh, change of events there as we took the green flag, Gitter up at the point doing battle, and then uh, I'm not sure what happened with my cameras, but the next thing I knew, caution flag was in the air, so I'm glad you caught that, Dave. So we go to the SRM instant replay. Oh, he just gets KO'd from behind. He gets shoved into the corner. It, look at the carnage already. That eight car is absolutely smoked. You know, Dave talked about patience here at the top of the broadcast. And uh, that was not the best display of that is a lot of times, you know, you're just antsy as a race car driver anticipating the green flag and uh, mistakes were made. there. very unfortunate as uh, some of these guys are going to have extended time in the pits is that pace car now back out in front of the field here at Martinsville. Single file they go, Matt DiCiani now going to be leading Patrick Gitter as they were just getting ready to battle things out. You know, I think that's one of the most, you know, frustrating things at a short track, just as some of these battles really heat up, is precisely when, you know, all of a sudden that caution comes out. And I mean, you know, at the end of the day, that's kind of what racing is at a short track, rubbing, bumping, moving people out of your way to impose your will upon them. But at the same time, it can be awful frustrating if you're one of those drivers that really has a shot here in this race. Yeah, well said, Dave. It's, it's all about grinding it out here, especially at a place like Martinsville. But the other side of this, you know, this if you want to give a driver mental fits, this is exactly the perfect way to do it. Take the green flag, run a lap and a half, and then throw the caution back out there. That will absolutely wreak havoc on them because they want to get into that race mindset, that race mode, and that's logging laps, getting into those reps. And when you start, start, stop, or I had it right the first time, that's going to do nothing but just get them out of sync even more. And hopefully we don't run into that scenario where cautions breed more cautions as those lights go back out on the iRacing.com pace car, which means we're going green flag racing next time. Bye. Yeah, you know, it's an excellent point. We talked about that extensively last week at Richmond. Of course, last week at Richmond, we were littered with cautions, which, you know, you and I both know that that's not something that we that we generally see at a place well, in a league like SNN. And, you know, I mean, last week at Richmond, we had a total of a, uh, 39 cautions for 29 laps. I mean, I was ready to put my head through the desk. I'm sure many of these drivers are ready to rip the wheel off of the rig. <laughs> I I didn't realize it was 39 cautions. Um, but then again, I feel like that I feel like that's very wrong. I'm just I, I do happen too. to be looking at the stat and it says 39 cautions. I feel like it's 29 cautions, but something's wrong there with that number. Yeah, I would have to have been heavily medicated to make it through that show. His green flag is back in the air. Matt DeCiani continues to carry the torch, and Patrick Gitter is going to slot into second. And who is falling back on the high side there? That looks like to be the 18 of Bobby Anderson going the wrong way as the first two positions are single file. Now Anderson and Matt Long are duking it out for that third place position. Yeah, Matt Long holding his own here on that high side, but, you know, there's there's a very fine line between grip and no grip of course you know you want to try to stay down on that concrete that's where your grip is going to be to try to rotate the setter here and it, you know the closer that you get to that seam between the concrete and the asphalt as Ethan Eckert seems to have bought one here second caution of the night nine laps in gonna be a long one buddy it, you know when the closer that you get to that seam the, the more dangerous things can get, especially because there's a lot of filler and caulk in there, and it, it's just downright slick. As we see Ethan Eckert here in the 11, just above Randall Watkins, right behind Ken Ron, as 
it looks like he went to try to check up and stay away from Kenron, and bad things happen. We're going to take another look at that, hopefully from the nose of the 11, because that yep. was just, that, that's an unfortunate circumstance. It is, and that was the right place at or the wrong place at the right time. He's trying to basically make a move here, and he's hard on the binders here at the point where he's applying the most braking force to that race car, and it's just going to step out on him. And once that car takes off, it's along for the ride and ends up there in the fence. Tough break there for Ethan Eckert, the Chicago native. However, the silver lining has hundreds of laps to get back into contention. Yeah, that, that is hundreds plural, and we're going to slow this down right here. Ah, I, I missed the, the opportunity to slow it down because something tells me here on that, and I hate, to, I hate to pause this in the middle of everything, but something tells me if we look at this front left quarter that we may not even see them make contact, that this may have been, you know, a little net code, code doing what net code does. As here we see him getting ever so close, and yeah, he actually does avoid the 33. I mean, he missed it by a hair. And if you notice there, those front tires didn't lock up. I think he had a little too much uh, rear brake dialed in it there, perhaps, and that happened to me, actually, in my race earlier this week, a very similar instance I was going into the corner on the high, you know, in the second groove, if you want to call it that, and I got a little too hard on the brakes, you know, around that seam transition, and the car just took off on me. Very similar instance. I just think that uh, that's just a racing deal here at Martinsville, Dave. It's cute that you think that there's multiple grooves. There's exactly one groove where everybody else is as we ride along here under caution with uh, Bobby hey. Anderson running in third right now. He's the only he's one of the few drivers that hasn't moved up or down any positions as he qualified on the inside of row 2 and runs right now in third position. Of course also sliding back here Dylan Banks in that same boat. You know, not a whole lot of banking here. So, it, you know, one touch of the throttle a little extra and that rear end is going to come stepping around. It absolutely will, especially when you're eating hard on the bottom in the preferred line. Preferred line. There there absolutely is. I don't want to say two official groups here, but you can run a half a lane up here, especially when you get some rub or uh, some wear on these good years and uh, and still can turn competitive lap times. As I just been uh, dumped by the Gatorade bucket, there is I had ice going all over my back. Thank you, honey. Appreciate that. <laughs> She's just trying to keep you cool. She knows it's a long night. Yep. Uh, just didn't had no idea it was coming. Ah, uh, ain't that cute as the iRacing.com pace car lights are out. Matt DeCiani going to have control of the field when we come back around to the Geico restart zone. The iRacing.com pace car makes the hard left turn down pit road. And as we enter the Geico restart zone, D zone DeCiani is going to ram the pedal through the floor, rolling out of four. And we are back green flag racing. I didn't think it was going to happen. Yeah, he waited on that deep into the restart zone, but like you said, green flag back in the air, and those V8s come roaring back to life. Deciani, Patrick Gitter, Matt Long, Bobby Anderson, and Neil Person, that's the top five, is two-on-two two action once again right around Anderson and the 97 of Matt Long. Taking a look at the sixth car of Paul Hill, right now he's just behind the 58 of Neil Pearson. And Pearson trying to lead the way here as they are side by side in front of the 98 and the uh, the 97 Yay. and the 18. I can math real good. You know, as we work here, finally getting a chance to show the standings. But, uh, you know, right where the 58 is right now, Neil Pearson, he's kind of hanging back here and thinking, you guys go ahead. I'm going to let you fight it out and take both of those positions when one of you makes a mistake and believe you me folks it's going to happen i don't care how good of a driver you think you are or how good of a driver you think that your guy is even the pros can't get around here without coming home with some scrubs on the side of there as randall watkins bringing out the next caution flag here as we take a peek at what my brother from uh, miami dade fire rescue has going on he's just behind the 80 of mark johnson oh oh comes right across the nose of Anthony Sauvignano and boom went the proverbial dynamite. I don't think, I, once again, I'm trying not to think that that was any kind of uh, 
intention there. I don't think that's intentional, especially this early on in the race. Go back to the eye in the sky, SRM instant replay. You can see how this is going to pop off here. She watched him come through the corner here. Ah, uh, there it is. The He's 90 got to run on the way out. Exactly. And 27 tried to come down, and that hole that was there disappeared. And he took a shot there in the back door of that race car and uh, kind of uh, screwed up the front, uh, the front clip at a minimum. However, right before that caution flag flew, I'll tell you what, Hill in that six had his hands full. He locked up the right front there a couple times and uh, came a matter of inches from having some hard contact in that race car. This was just as the caution flag came out for the third incident. For the third, oh my God, let me try that again. For the third incident this evening is we're now working at lap 20 with that iRacing.com pace car leading the way once again. It's going to be DiGiani, Gitter, Anderson, Long. So Anderson once again staying in third position. Then I see back here a little bit deeper, Eric Papineau and Noah Hamilton kind of agreeing to disagree and just go back to their respective corners as they both are sitting in 17th and 18th. And uh, right now just three drivers where they started this piece, four drivers if you include Neil Pearson in the 58. So, you know, I'm starting to see a pattern where some of these guys are just simply trying to, you know, bide their time. And patience is a virtue. You know, we know that, of course, from the good book. But, uh, you know, at the same time here on the racetrack, it's it's even bigger and more important. Uh, something that we see far too often is guys letting their patience run out and the patience outweighs the talent sometimes. Yeah, I mean, saying it is one thing, doing it is another. and uh, But that is the beast that is Martinsville. Uh, this track can bring out the ugly in just about anybody. And we've seen that throughout the course of history here, especially when we get into situations like this. Green flag, caution flag, green flag, caution flag, green flag, nuclear explosion. You know, Hopefully we don't have under. Go ahead. Right. Oh, sorry. Uh, Speaking of, uh, you know, patience outweighing talent, you know, Chris Claude is, he is a master of patience. He's kind of like Mr. Miyagi. This guy, he's already up six positions running in 24th right after starting 30th. And Chris, at this stage in the race, he's just riding out. Stage one is always, you know, his ride around, let's just take our time kind of stage. And, it, you know, that can go a long way because you and I talked about it last week at Richmond. Somehow you can go from 24th, and with enough patience and discipline, you can suddenly wind up in the top 15, top 10. Yeah, he's the Jedi master of the league in that department. That's his calling card uh, from Fairview, Tennessee, uh, the HMFIC of the league in that 10 monster machine. I mean, right now he doesn't even have his race gloves on. I mean, I mean they're on, but he's not... He's not in the office yet. He's just out there right now, just uh, damage control. Is what in the world happened there? It was a mess of a restart. And race radio is starting to heat up as I'm going to get this out of the way, get that back in here. And apparently there was a connection issue in the middle of all of that. Everybody checked up, so we stay green flag racing here on lap number 24. Patrick Gill yeah. and Bobby Anderson side by side once again behind Matt DiGiani. And, and you know, we see this on the intermediate tracks more than anything, but at a short track, when you're side by side and you're battling it out, all of a sudden that that car in front of you, whether it's the leader or just the next position up, winds up gaining on you oh. something fierce as Gitter just grabbed some wall. We'll take a peek at that in just a moment as Gitter's still trying to get into line. He's going to cut someone's nose off and spite his face as he is now slid all the way back to fifth position. And we'll caution see, flag. We'll see first things. what Gitter did here is we're under caution on lap 26. He got and like here, death wobble. Watch the front of his car. It just goes berserk. You have to wonder, and, and I'm starting to think that this may be an Xfinity. Wow. Yeah, that wasn't normal. Absolutely not. Just the way that car just yawed hard right and left like that. That I knew something was very... uh wrong inside the cockpit of that race car he gets it uh, under control and then basically cuts off the nose of that dark horse ford mustang being piloted by paul hill now we're going to take a look at diego rodriguez here in the 69 menards machine 
as he was who brought this out. He's getting a good run here behind Kavaja, but almost too good of a run. He locks the rear wheels up and brings it around. And as soon as he oh turns, my. oh, wow. Ooh. Oh. Oh. The, uh, listen, he, you just saw the way that he popped off the field like that. He was sitting there slamming his fist into the toe button to get out of the way. Absolutely was. Could not push it fast enough. And unfortunately there, you end up being a blind pick to the car behind you as the minute he moves out of the way there's a car sitting there parked and you eat nothing but sheet metal and that's unfortunately what happened in that situation you know why you can't eat aluminum right enlighten me you can't eat aluminum because you'll sheet metal <laughs> That explains a lot. Yeah, it explains a lot of the bleeding, too. <laughs> At least now I have an answer to tell the doctor. You should just tell the boss, man, just go to a metal-free diet. You won't have those types of indigestion. Yeah, is, that, is that on keto or not? I don't think so. I, I think don't... keto is more like uh, copper-based, things like that. Ah, copper, zinc. So basically, eat your pennies. Eat your pennies, right. Here, and I've been giving them to the Hungry Kids and, and Victory Junction. What a waste. <laughs> Speaking of the Victory wanted... Junction, they just celebrated 20 years of Victory Junction camping. Of course, that coming out of uh, Petty Enterprises. And, you know, there are some organizations that I know you and I as, as parents can, can kind of, you know, have a soft spot for there are organizations like Victory Junction that deal with kids with terminal illness and, you know, birth defects and things like that, you know, paralytics and the like, that they give these kids an opportunity to go be kids for a change instead of sitting in doctor's offices and, and treatment centers. And it's definitely, you know, folks, go check out Victory Junction's website. I don't have it at my fingertips, so go ahead and Google Victory Junction. But, um, you know, I'm always very humbled to remember the fact that when when my kids were born you know 10 fingers 10 toes and fairly smart i mean they've got me for a father so it it varies but uh you know i i look at some of these kids and the smiles on their faces at victory junction and i just think wow they're experiencing life for a change and and good life for a change so 20 years happy birthday to victory junction yeah and that all of course inspired by the tragic sudden loss of adam petty um no that was actually at new hampshire motor speedway unfortunately was somewhere short. green flag back in the air once again really no change up front matt DeCiani continues to carry the torch the 18 however of bobby anderson is going to get away from the clutches of matt long so there's a little bit of a uh, change up there but just as i say that here he comes on the outside dave the outside <laughs> <laughs> My goodness. You know, you would think it's, it's almost like this should be the Alzheimer's 500 because people seem to forget what happens when you try to run that high line for too long here. One flinch and you're done. Well, don't tell Matt Long that because he is trying to make it work. <laughs> Thank you, Matt Long, for validating my point. <laughs> I would also like to, for licensure purposes, remind everyone that I can use the Alzheimer's joke. My grandmother and my grandfather both had full-blown Alzheimer's. It, uh, it's allowed for me. But uh, 90, the 97 of Matt Long now side-by-side -side with Bobby Anderson as they come down the front stretch. We're finally getting some good green flag laps here. I hope I didn't just jinx it. But it looks like Matt Long is going to slide right in front of Anderson. And maybe this is the point where Anderson backs off and says, you know what, go ahead and burn your stuff up. I'm going to take a breather back here and reload. Meanwhile, Kavaja Holt starting to tear down the wall between he and Dalton Mobley. And, and I feel like, and maybe this is just me, and maybe I've just been doing it for too long in this league, but I feel like I say Mobley and Holt in the same sentence a lot. Yeah, those two really can't get away from each other, and they carry about the same amount of aggression and... Uh and Spice with him at the same time. If you take a look at that ZL1 Camaro being piloted by Mobley, he's already got pug face on the front of that race car, and we're barely 40 laps into this piece. Nonetheless, though, they're ma both making progress through the field. As you mentioned in warm-up, uh, Kavaja Holt, very fast race car here tonight. Can he go the distance and survive the test of time? 
So far, so good for the double zero as he runs in that 10th place position up one spot from where he started. I thought you were about to break out into that song from the Hercules movie in the 90s, Can You Go the Distance, as Tane Hodison in the 93 is chasing down no. Seba Cornez. There's a battle brewing behind him between Ron Fitting and Anthony Sauvignano in the 90. Now they've got, looks like the 81 of Ryan Samuelson side by side. Samuelson already down a lap here as that's not for position there. So they almost want him to just kind of get out of the way and give them some space to work as they want to go at it pretty hot and heavy. Kavaja, meanwhile, shooting right alongside of Cat, uh, Captain Gitter here. Patrick running Ooh. here in the 20 uh, 21 car on the low side of that Trisha's Hope double zero. And I'll tell you what, I kind of like the new Trisha's Hope look on the, uh, on the old Dark Horse. Yeah, it's looking great. I love the revamped uh, reinvigorated design on that car here tonight. Trisha's Hope, obviously, you know, cannot thank them enough, especially Brian Tarnowski, what he does here for uh, the Stacy Strong Cup Series. If you guys don't know what we're talking about, go check out the website. Quick little keyword search on Google, get you to the right place. And if you're able to donate, doesn't matter how big or how, how small, uh, it goes to a good cause. And uh, we certainly would be very thankful of that. So we continue to watch the 11 Kavaja Holt run just outside the top 10 in that 11th place position. And Dave, another driver that was using the high side trying to make a pass here. Just wanted to point that out. Yeah, Gitter seems to think he can get her done that way as we just had our near longest green flag stretch of the race, 12 laps until it came out just now. I, I, while you were talking, I was, I was Pete, not that I wasn't hanging on to your every word like a dedicated follower, but... While you were doing that, I was taking a peek here at uh, at our stats and saw that we had gone 11 and now 12 laps of green right before the caution came out. This time, Michael Peterson showing up on the line. This could be a problem for him. As we see him in the Hendrick Motorsports, what in the world is on the hood of that thing? As he just brings it around and noses himself into the wall. No harm, no foul. Oh, no. Oh, my. I got really worried when I see him when I seen him pop it in reverse like that with the whole with the whole slew of cars coming off the corner. But uh. I'm desperate to find out what this says here. I can't. Some read. it's sometimes we're better off Hendrick. not knowing. It's somebody alongside of uh, Rick Hendrick. It almost looks like Daniel Suarez, but that would be impossible. I'm not sure what this picture is on the front of Michael Peterson's ride here. In fact, let me see if I can pull this up. I don't think it's... Did I qualify? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Let's get away from that. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> you, you know, the thing, I guess, that throws me is that he's driving a Ford with Hendrick on the front of it. It was very, very, you know, distracting. I think that's the concept behind that paint scheme. See, nobody gave me any notes on that. I'm just out here flying without a net. Well, that's the best part about broadcast, Candy, is when these drivers give us, you know, a paint scheme, just something, you know, that throw they throw at us that uh, draws us in, gets them some extra air time as well. As, of course, the uh, safety truck staying here on the back stretch, right there where uh, Pit Road's entrance is. As we're here on lap number 46, just over halfway. No, wait, are we, are we just over halfway yet to uh, the end of stage one? Yeah. Yes, we're just yes. over halfway to the end of stage one. Hallelujah. As we're taking a look at the YouTube.com live chat. Oh, apparently that is Nolan on the car. So for reasons I'm not quite sure of, Nolan Hodgson is on the front of uh, of that car. I, I, Did he sign a deal with Hendrick? Or a deal with the devil? I don't know. It depends on if you're a Hendrick fan. Well, hey, if, that's still pretty cool. I mean, I wouldn't care who I signed a deal with to get into the, you know any level of competition in within the NASCAR umbrella. To be quite honest with you, here but, comes a uh, little Cold War reference. I'd sign a deal with Khrushchev if I could get behind the wheel of one of these stock cars. Well said. I could not agree with you more, there, Dave. You weren't really ready for a Cold War reference, were you? I wasn't, but uh, you made it work. <laughs> Why not? It's all it's like warfare out here on the racetrack at times. Can you imagine? I actually, 
can you imagine? I was working with Jordan Brockell for the first time uh, about two weeks ago. He was on a little bit of a uh, let's try this out deal with me. And okay. Alan warned him about my habit, about my little my thing that I do. <laughs> okay. And oh. I waited until toward the very end of, of the race that we were calling to try to break him. And I did uh -huh. because I can. I did it last night in 47 seconds. Green flag back in the air. That's a new record for me, by the way, is Matt DeCiani. Takes it to the field once again on the restart. He's going to score it out about a two car length advantage. And here comes the Fury right behind him. Is here goes Bobby Anderson all over the Dark Horse Mustang being piloted by Matt, excuse me, Matt Long. Is now Matt Long has his sights set on DeCiani. But look how much of a drive in Bobby Anderson gets on that corner entry. However, if you get, if you get it on one end, you're going to have to give it up somewhere. And clearly, that car being driven by uh, Matt Long there, really getting off the corner really well right now. Yeah, and, you know, Anderson kind of fighting a tight condition. He's not able to get in there and rotate the best that he can. You can see that. Let's take a look as we go here into turn three as he's just behind the 58 of Pearson. You see how Pearson's nose is kind of angled in toward the center of the turn, whereas Bobby Anderson, you can almost see that thing you know, yawed out just a little bit to the right. He's not able to get a good uh, rotation in three, but he gets a good jump out of four. Yeah, it's, you know, it's funny how the car behaves here at this racetrack because this, you know, as far, as far as, you know, logistics, you know, this track is the same in one and two as it is in three and four. And yet, you know, the way the car gets through the corners, through the, the complexes, if you will, is almost completely different at times. That's a great point you bring up there, Dave. Yeah, you know, it's something that we see here and, and maybe at one or two other racetracks where they're darn near symmetrical. But, it, you know, even so, the amount of the amount of momentum that you come down the, bat, the stretches with, whether it's front or back, you know, can change how you're going to drive that corner. As we take a look at Anthony Sauvignano chasing down Randy Belk in the 50 in that Team Conti Chevrolet Camaro, as Sauvignano in his dark horse kind of able to hold the low side just a little bit better here on lap number 55 as we work our way through stage number one and Sauvignano going to give a good run for his money to Randy Belk as finally a lot of these drivers have gone single file and of course as I say that Sauvignano peaks to the outside sure why not let's try this again hey. yeah that is guaranteed going to happen Dave I have come to accept it and here we go the 90 sends it down to the inside Howard Eaton on the bottom He's going to make that pass clean. The 50 did not pose any type of a challenge there. And that is indicative of these drivers saying, okay, we're done with these cautions. Let's get single file and log some laps. And it's great to see that we've reached this point in the race, Dave. Now 57 laps completed out of the scheduled 400. Oh, wow. And according to race Oh, no. Believe, oh, he my, just got the airport. 66. What in the world? Well, according to Race Radio, I believe the Messiah was on the racetrack. How do you tell a Dega at Martinsville? Uh, well, we're going to find what? out. Oh, oh my, my God. Oh, he got Ryan Newman at Martinsville. Something Are very you kidding bad. Me? Uh, we're going to look at this from the blimp now. As we take a look at Chris Custer here in the 66. But I think something, you know, hardware related happened to Custer. As he was here and just the car shot to the right. Oh. 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 I I need my jaw jack to put, get my jaw up the off the floor back into my, I can't even think right now. That yeah, was gonna... absolutely violent. We're going to go right here to the uh, to the cockpit. Now, watch him roll out of here. Watch his hands. Oh, he tried to call, catch it coming out of the turn and overcorrected. And then he goes airborne in one of the most bizarre wrecks you'll ever see at a half-mile racetrack. I want to try to find Kavaja because the view oh. from Kavaja has got to be insane. Yeah, that's VIP oh, I'm sorry, front Siba. row. 
Yeah, Seba Cornets. That's got to be VIP front row tickets. Code everything about to unfold just out the windshield of the 59. He cut. Oh. Oh. Ay, vey. <laughs> One more that's, look here from the roof. That's going on my YouTube channel. <laughs> Never in my life. No. Uh, it, you know what? I've never seen a car get... It's, it's almost like <laughs> Custer had... If we go back right here, Custer had just enough... Had just enough air. And, I mean, look at the way that the car was already yeah. tilted. And Seba came in at just the right just second the right to time. just scrape him out of the way. And he just picks him up like he got... He got let loose off of a SAM launcher. A sidewinder. Uh, incredible. At Martinsville. Well, you see the you know, 74 it, just get by there? This is the same reason why I always bring a, uh, a scorebook to the ballpark during baseball season because you never know what you're going to see live and in person as we just saw it here on Sim Racing Media. Dave Regal and Matt Mettler with you here in the SNN broadcast, uh, the SRM broadcast booth. You're watching the Stacy Strong Sunday Night NASCAR Cup Series. I want to welcome everybody into the YouTube.com live chat. Of course, we see Amanda Price saying, let's go. Callie H. is cheering on Nolan. Amanda Price here for Sean Rogers, as always. And apparently it's Nolan signing with Rick Hendrick. So kill the uh, we hate Rick Hendrick line. I don't hate Fat Rick. I don't. I can't believe it. That is... That's cool. Congratu that, congratulations, man. That is huge news. Hodgson right now running in uh, 15th position as we go back green flag racing. We'll take a peek here. Now, if only I could get the darn thing zoomed in. There is that. There it is. There is Nolan Hodgson here. So apparently that picture that we were talking about earlier was uh, Nolan Hodgson signing with Rick Hendrick. One of the one of the elites in NASCAR, if you ask me. Congratulations, Nolan. That's something I could only ever dream of accomplishing, and you went out there and did it. Uh, I can't even get him to sign a roll of toilet paper, you know. I mean, think about. I mean, just think about that for a minute. I know we're racing right now. His caution's back out once again, but I mean, very few people in their life. No matter what walk of life, you know, what your profession is, only the elites get to do something like that. And for him to be able to do that, you know, in all those great years ahead of him, I mean, that is just certainly incredible. As I go on board here to the SRM Instant Replay, looks like deja vu all over again. Going to take uh, a look here from the rear of Matt Mackin, who was involved in this. We see the 35 on his low side and yeah it looks like Mackin simply came down and in into the driving line of the 35 Oy. Matt got macked <laughs> I'll say he did as we work lap number 67 here two thirds of the way to 100 but nothing crazy well, hopefully they got plenty of hot dogs here outside the turn one concession stand. Because something tells me, Dave, it's going to be one of those evenings into the nights. Yeah, you know, unfortunately, as we as we sit here on lap number 67, I mean, it's taken us a half hour to go 67 laps, which when you're supposed to be running 19 second laps, I mean, that's going to get downright out of control as Matt DeCiani, still our race leader up here, He's battled his way up there. Of course, you know, it, it almost feels like the 21 of Patrick Gitter was punted as uh, right now Gitter way back here in 17th position. And that, that's, first of all, that's not a good feeling to know that you have a car that's capable of leading this race and here you sit mired in the top 20. It's going to be DeCiani, Matt Long, Neil Pearson, Dylan Banks, Sean Rogers, Paul Hill, Bobby Anderson, Kavaja Holt, Dalton Mobley, and Randy Belk, your top 10. 
And, you know, I'll tell you what, 69 laps in the books, we could probably stretch this this fuel way out past uh, fuel and tires, realistically, way out past the end of stage number one is they don't have a whole lot of green flag laps on them. Oh, they don't. And, and this all goes back to also, you know, heat cycling as well. I mean, this plays a factor, too. But, no, we don't have a lot of green flag laps on these Goodyear Eagles. You know, that's only going to extend the mileage, you know, as we're under the seventh caution now on the evening. Maybe that caution, maybe that seventh caution is the lucky number here. And perhaps we'll finally get some good, you know, long green flag runs. It's starting to add up here and. You know, that's going to make for a long night, both for these drivers and, of course, the two of us up here. And the one thing that's that's eventually going to happen is patience is going to run all the way out, even for the most disciplined driver down on the racetrack. And these cars will suddenly go from a Chevrolet Camaro to a Chevrolet 5500 with a V plow. (laughs) And usually it's when the most stable get to that point where they hit the C4 that's usually when it gets really interesting is that iRacing.com pace car pulls off one more time. Go to the eye of the sky and look at DC honey. He catches the field sleeping easily going to uh, check back out, take that lead back once again. And Matt Long, you wanted a long green flag run. Well, you got Matt Long and P2. Maybe this is the time, as you were saying, Dave, we can get a run put together here as two by two action. Right here, right around the 58 of Neil Pearson, as he's going door to door with the 70 of Dylan Banks, working the outside of the racetrack, trying to get that run. But the 58 gets a good head of steam built up as he charges back down into the corner and now falls into the clutches of a charging Sean Rogers, who's up six spots now in that fourth place position. Is we got a parking lot started once again. It broke out here with the 70, and I want, I was trying to click to it. Let's see if we can run this back here right to the very beginning of this, of this caution. Because I started to see it develop, and I, I thought, well, maybe we'll stay green and we'll just have to go back to it later. Watch the 70 in front of Sean Rogers. Oh, my. Now, they kind of get themselves, they kind of get themselves figured out. Okay, and we stay green. And then all kind of hell breaks loose as we go back to Nolan Hodgson, who sees that, checks up. And, and don't get me wrong, that's a wise checkup when you see that ahead of you. And Ethan Eckert goes sideways as he tries to lock him up, and bad things happen. And, and of course, you know, we're going to hear all kinds of explanations and excuses. Remember, they start with the same two letters that doesn't make either one true as to how this one broke out. <laughs> But 75 laps, and, I mean, let's be real, the stage caution is five laps away. Well, like you said, you may not be the best uh, math, mathematician out there, but it doesn't take one to really kind of figure out what uh, what's taking place here or shaping up tonight. But hopefully, in the words of Stained, we have to break the cycle. So whatever you guys need to do at home, I mean, I'll do the rain dance up here in the booth, whatever, to get this black voodoo cloud of caution flags off this racetrack so we can get to some green flag high-octane racing action here from Martinsville as we're now under that eighth caution on the evening, as Dave Regal just mentioned. And that was just an ugly uh, situation there, just uh, that checkup. As Tony Trapasso would say, the fuse was lit in front of him and the bomb went off. At, you know, right there on the racetrack. Taking a look now at Randall Watkins. He's down here in my neck of the woods, Miami, Florida. Cancer Warrior. And I believe Dave has an update on the 27th. Yeah, they uh, they actually just removed. He had a he had a, a cast on uh, on his left foot due to a broken bone. And uh, as of Tuesday, it was removed before the truck race, which he definitely improved, um, you know, from his previous Coda races. So he was able to use the left foot to break which is exactly what he needed so you know he uh he's back to 100 percent as far as broken bones and body parts go the cancer warrior out of the 305 of course uh my brother in uh in my the miami dade fire and rescue department down there and um, i'll tell you what what a cool dude i've gotten a chance to sit and talk with randall for 
you know, quite a long time this season and just a really nice, respectful dude, you know, somebody that I like hanging out with. Yeah, he's, he is a great guy. I've had an opportunity to speak with him a couple times, uh, not this season, unfortunately, but last season, and it's great to see him back out here in competition tonight. I couldn't agree with you more, Dave. The iRacing.com pace car lights are out. Matt DeCiani in control of the field one more time here as we look from the eye in the sky, working our way down the backstretch. I want to see if DeCiani dices it up again on this restart here. He has been getting them each and every time. I mean, there's only so many different ways to play this, but yet he finds a way to win the chess match as he comes off the turn, off a of turn four here, approaching the Geico restart zone. Long is going to try to keep him honest. And what a restart by DeCiani as Long tried to anticipate, and DeCiani caught it and made him pay. You know, something that I've been thinking about, why is he holding off as long as he is on the restarts? And it just came to me. We're going to drop right here onto the nose of DeCiani as he comes back onto the front stretch. We're going to ride along for a lap with him here. I want you to see this. I've been trying to figure out why he's dogging this thing so hard on the restart because, of course, once you hit that Geico restart zone, you can drop the hammer. Watch where the restart zone begins as we come into three. Here it is already. And there. He actually waits until he gets onto the front stretch at the toward the end of the restart zone as here we are, caution number nine. With the wheels pointed straight and now and there was nine. Now, somebody said that was fun, but I'm guessing somebody didn't have a whole lot of fun. No, that was, I'm pretty sure that was sarcasm, as uh, Matt Long actually turned the fastest lap of the race before uh, that happens. We go back to the eye of the sky, SRM instant replay. Who was that that just disappeared in front of Mackin? I'm not sure, but I'm not surprised it happened in front of Matt Mackin. So let's take a look, because I don't know if that was... Who that might have been? There's the 90 of Savignano. There's Hodgson. And they just engaged Hodgson the flux. just disappeared. Gone. He 1.21 gigawatted it out of there. <laughs> hey, I had to try to make something out of it. <laughs> I want to see the <laughs> gigawatted. <laughs> yeah, he just disappeared. From in front of Mackin, and then reappears at the at coming into the next turn. It's what makes time travel possible, Dave? Well, he, he was definitely he, going slightly more than eighty-eight miles per hour. Well, we don't know for sure. Well, that's going to bring out the uh, stage caution here, <laughs> and I'm not even sure who won that that uh, stage because. We were watching the replay instead of focusing on what we didn't even realize to be the end of the stage. So an apology, folks. Um, I would say from the bottom of my heart, but on caution number nine and stage number one, that heart's getting shallow. But it's still a heart. And since you referenced Michael Bolton earlier, however, generic Disney Michael Bolton, you just need some time, love, and tenderness to get through the 400 laps here tonight. Really? You went all the way there, huh? I went all the way there. <laughs> you just made every now middle-aged white woman in America happy to even whisper the words Michael Bolton. I think my mother's ears just twitched, and she's 600 miles from me. Well, that's the DJ in me coming out. <laughs> not that I play a lot of Michael Bolton, but... Uh, well, I would hope not, because that would be an awful boring uh, gathering. But uh... However, steel bars would be relevant. I feel like Michael Bolton's probably more popular on Delilah. Is that still a thing? Oh, that's still... A, she's got a TikTok now. Really? Yeah, I follow her. She's got a, you know, she got a TikTok there. She tells us about stuff, and, you know, she kind of dropped off the face of the earth. She lost some of her syndication, but, of course, you're st she's still available Wait on uh, iHeart. Sorry to cut you off here, but hold the soft jams. How is Chris Davis in the lead? Up 33 he spots. He must have stayed out. He's in front of everyone else. That's how you get the lead. Well, well he obviously. last pitted on lap 11. <laughs> That's how we got the lead. That, that was that was as close as we're going to get to who's on first. Right. Yeah, Chris Davis stays out because he was last out on lap number 11. Samuelson 11. 
And Samuelson was here on 66, Tarnowski on 59. Looks like Matt DeCiani came down here on 83, as you should, as well as Matt Long all the way down through the rest of the field. And the lead lap car is still 29 laps on the, or 29 cars on the lead lap as Chris Davis now going to have control of the field. Let's see if he follows the same pattern that DeCiani has. He hits the restart zone and we're back underway. Oh, what Stage big time. Stage two, click it away as Brian Tarnowski has a winch, has a rear view mirror full of Patrick Gitter. And Gitter is going to be, wow, literally oh. bump drafting. Heads caution in the air. And someone, it seems, very upset on race radio. And the race radio is gone nuclear, as expected. Dave, I know there's a lot going on in that restart there, but it looks like Ryan Samuelson not only money shifted, but uh, got stuck in neutral and then almost lost it. I don't know how he kept that car rolling straight. Watching Dalton Mobley in the deuce, Mobley comes across the front of the 93. Ay. I mean, he just drove right through the two. Yeah, I don't think you can get there from here. As we'll take a look then at Ryan Samuelson as well, but we're going to one more look here at the already pug nosed Dalton Mobley in the deuce. He's being bumped all the way down the rear. Ah, they, the 93 wanted to take him three wide for reasons nobody yep. can understand. I can't fathom why you would want to do that there. And he clearly knows he is making contact with the two, and he just keeps his foot right in it. He the does only, not lift. The only thing that comes to mind is that. Marijuana is now recreational in many different states. I'm not sure if that helps us in this situation. I, I think it... Oh, there's the money... Sh Whoa! It, he wow. money shifted and then gets stuck in neutral, it seems. And then when he finally grabs a gear, he's got so much RPM in it, when it finally catches, he almost loses it again. We're going to ride along in the cockpit. Oh, just a sloppy restart for Samuelson. Okay. Westminster, Maryland. And apparently he's my favorite. He's my sister's favorite driver. Favorite driver, as always. I, you know, I've said this before. My, my sister's not into dudes. So Wait a minute. I thought you didn't get five gears here at Martinsville anymore. Yeah, you, get, you get as many as you can. That must have been a bad dream because I could have swore that you only got four now. Ten cautions through 91 laps is a bad dream. Oh, you were talking about... Never mind. <laughs> well done, Dave. <laughs> it's all good. Dial it up, man. I am issuing the warning. Ten cautions through 91 laps. I am coming off of my leash, and I will bark at anybody who causes another one. We can, we can activate GTA 5 radio mode. Not a problem. Where's the dump button? I have to be near the dump button. <laughs> Taking a look here. Yeah, Kendall Latza saying another caution. Da, da, da. Excellent observation. Do you work for the federal government? <laughs> Brian Tarnowski going to be starting P2. Patrick Gitter in P3. So, you know, here's the thing. As we're double filed already, Chris Davis is going to have a rear view mirror full of Patrick Gitter all over again as we get ready to rock and roll. So we're going to drop down here to his gearbox and look from that... Uh, look from that rear angle here because we saw it a moment ago Patrick Gitter it wants to get back up there well I'll tell you what the restart woes did not affect Chris Davis on that first attempt as we go deep into his box here for the pitchers back looking at the uh, 21 of Gitter Chris Davis executes a masterful restart once again no tires no problem is he's going to maintain the lead. Patrick Gitter slots into that second place position, but look at him charging in that Camaro. He is going to put the pressure to Davis. I can assure you of that. And there he, he goes. goes. Making a move to the inside. As I couldn't get the camera switched fast enough, Chris Davis having to quickly seat away as Patrick Gitter wanted to get back up there. And, and believe me, what in the world is going oh on back my. here? That almost seemed like slow mo. Oh, oh. no! That's going to be a penalty. That's. They're still they're locked still up. They're still locked up. He's. Four, and five, six hits. Where's the 18 there here? I, look, that, I, that was the mental breakdown I was talking about earlier. Mental breakdown? I'd have to have a mental to have a breakdown of it. 
as we're going to look at this right here. Oh, terrible camera angle. Let's see if I can go back here to the blimp just before. My hands can't move fast enough. I need, I need more buttons. I mean, he just continues to javelin through Brian Tarnowski as they got sandwiched there. They try to go four wide. Okay, so they're three wide here. So, uh, oh, Tarnowski got a little wild. Four and wide. And they went four wide. Oh, my God. <laughs> And it looks like Anderson just had a little extra for Tarnowski yeah. and Anderson, would not come off of him. No, Anderson popped open the Dave's Insanity sauce. It's turned up the spice meter and just kept his foot in the hot pedal. This is four wide. <laughs> that is absolutely nuts. <laughs> I feel like at this point I'm going nuts. One more time, I want to look at this from Tarnowski's perspective. Now, we're going to look at this in just a little bit of slow-mo when we get closer to it. Now, we see them go three wide behind Tarnowski. The 80 on the bottom, Tarnowski shoots down and over, overshoots the turn entry. He slides back up the racetrack. The 80 is going to be able to slide past him. Light contact. That's Mark Tarnowski. Johnston. Yeah, so Johnston basically straightens out Tarnowski. Allows him to make the corner, and then here's the icing on the cake. I just, I don't understand where this comes from for Anderson or where, where this decision from Anderson comes from as we look again. It's... He slides it, up. Go ahead, Dave. I'm sorry. Oh, my. That's just, you hit your breaking point, and you pull a Kyle Busch on somebody. You know, going back to when he took out Ron Hornady Jr. in that championship race. You know, you just you just have those moments where you make really bad, ill-advised decisions. It, that is Martinsville. And if it started, they were not even lap 100, this is going to be an endurance event. It's all going to be about survival. If this is already happening at oh, lap ninety-nine, it is going to be a game of survival. Here, you know, here's the here's what I'm thinking as I'm looking here: 27, 28 cars on the lead lap, 29, 30 cars on the lead lap. These cars haven't even gotten a chance to be lapped by Patrick Gitter, who has now driven his way on the recovery back up to the point, just behind the iRacing.com pace car. Gitter's not even able to start putting these cars laps down because we've had so many cautions tonight. 11 cautions in 99 laps, 100 when we come back to the line, and 300 to go. Gitter back on the point, back on the loud pedal, and another beautiful restart by the 21. Ryan Samuelson doing having a great recovery drive there after... Was it two or three restarts ago? It went all wrong for the 81, and yet there he is up 10 spots in second. Chris Davis getting the good out of those good years that have been on that car for a lifetime, yet he still runs in that third-place position, up 31 spots from where he, sp where he started. And then in fourth, the wild child, Paul Hill, in the six. It is hot and heavy around that six right now, Dave. It is as Paul Hill works his way just behind Chris Davis in the 74. He looks to the inside, but he's now not able to get the, the run that he needs to get underneath the 74 because if you can wedge yourself under that driver and take the inside away, you run a pretty good chance of having that, that driver have to go to the high side, check up, and steal that spot away. That's how you're going to pass cars here. That's how you're going to make moves. It's not going to be by using that car as a battering ram, as Patrick Gitter has now laid fast time down at 19.19 .19 seconds here on lap 103. Dave Regal and Matt Mettler with you. We're going to step aside and take a merciful break here on Sim Racing Media as uh, we are working lap 104 in the Stacy Strong Sunday Night NASCAR Cup Series.
just late to basket court defend. He's got the outside line for the second part, and he can't hold on. Going the long way around. We're going to be three wide for the lead as they all come to the line. Who is going to take it in the end? And here comes Lockwood. He's going to make the move to the outside. Quinn tries to force him off a little bit, but there he goes. It's going to be side by side through turn one. Will he be able to cover him off? He does. Weaving back to the left-hand side. Reynolds is trying everything. The kitchen sink is being thrown at it. They're leaning on each other. Coming into turn number three. It's going to be a drag race through three and four. Coming back to the line. Here comes Frisch on the bottom. Richard's going to hold the inside. Tries to be the late breaker here. They're going to be side by side through the final chicane. They bang doors, but keep it clean. As that still four wide on the run down and the back straightaway. Demerit's looking for a line as well. What is going on in Michigan? No back into the fence. They're still beating and banging. Oh and to the line. He is much faster coming through there. Is there damage on Chaloner? Apromitis is ahead. Oh, There's going to be a race to the line. Who is going to get it? With the Butt Kicker Gamer 2, what you see and what you hear is what you feel. Butt Kicker, the future is feeling. The most realistic online racing sim ever made. This is iRacing. Detailed laser scan tracks, fully dynamic, real world cars, and over 50 series to choose from. Six online world championships offering over $400,000 in annual prizes. This is the original eSport racing game. This is iRacing. My name is Leon Kyles. I'm a prostate cancer survivor. I have two adult children, 134, 125, and a wife. And I'm glad to be here today. When I got the initial news of my prostate cancer, it was devastating because I got a phone call from my doctor later, late in the evening. And I was wondering why he was calling, so I put it on speakerphone, and me and my wife were sitting there watching the movie. And he just came straight out and said, you got cancer. You know, the first thing that went through my mind was, man, am I going to make it? So I had a lot of different thoughts going through my mind. You know, I didn't know if I was going to be able to survive. You know, what was going to happen with my wife, my kids. And, you know, I, I, I felt hurt, a lot of pain. Through 211, actually, they gave me the number to Trisha Hope, and which was a great thing because Trisha Hope has been very helpful throughout my process of going through my cancer, going through my surgery. Now it's in remission, I don't have it anymore, no diagnosis. And she really helped me with some bills and, and stuff like that, with a grant that I appreciate very much. She um, helped me out, also gave me some uh, referrals to some agencies that could help me out in my city in Anderson. Um, we talked, we had 
at least, you know, probably over the last few months, at least about six or seven conversations where, you know, she would always have an encouraging word to say, always, you know, telling me to be thankful, you know, and just live your life to the fullest and them the things I've been doing. Anybody that may be experiencing cancer in any shape, form, or fashion, trust God. You have to be patient. You have to make your doc go to your doctor's appointments, and then just you know live your life to the full ex extent. Enjoy yourself and just keep moving forward because God is there for you. This program is to help cancer patients and you know the donations would be gratefully appreciated because they go through a lot of things and they have a lot of doctor's appointments a lot of bills um, things that you know they can't take care of anymore because of the job situation leave of absences some people never go back to work some people are going through chemo and they need a helping hand. So if you could donate anything to help the Trisha Hope Foundation, it would be greatly appreciated. Racing isn't easy, but experiencing it is. iRacing puts you in the driver's seat with the industry's leading sim racing game. Drive on laser scan replicas of the greatest racing circuits from around the world. Go head-to-head -head against other drivers chosen by skill-based matchmaking to ensure competitive racing at every level. Compete across all your favorite series. In officially licensed cars, engineered to deliver the most accurate driving experience possible. Join a race or host your own with players from across the globe. Race against the computer or in a league with friends. Feel the thrill behind the wheel. Visit iRacing.com. Pring Garden Weed Preventer and Pring Garden Weed Preventer Plus Plant Food block weeds before they start and are safe for use around over 400 flowers, vegetables, trees, and shrubs. Best of all, they give you three months of freedom from weeding in just four easy steps. You can apply Preen anytime before or during the growing season. But since it's a weed preventer, not a weed killer, early spring is best. Here's how. Start by removing existing weeds and their roots in the area where you want to apply Preen. Sprinkle granules directly onto dry soil, mulch, or stone so that they're evenly spaced. Within 24 hours of applying, integrate the granules into the top layer of soil or mulch or stone-covered bed. 
Finally, water with a hose or sprinkler or a well-timed soaking rain to activate the protective weed barrier. When activated, Preen creates an invisible weed-fighting barrier just below the soil surface that targets and prevents weed seeds from sprouting and forming roots. People and pets may enter the treated area once dusts have settled and the area is thoroughly dry from watering or first rain. That's it! Now you'll have a beautiful weed-free space and three months to do anything but weeding. Satisfaction guaranteed. Trusted for over 50 years, Preen is America's number one weed preventer brand with weed preventers for every type of garden. The most realistic online racing sim ever made. This is iRacing. Detailed laser scan tracks, fully dynamic, real world cars, and over 50 series to choose from. Six online world championships offering over $400,000 in annual prizes. This is the original eSport racing game. This is iRacing. Race fans, welcome back to Martinsville, Virginia, as we wait to see who can keep their grip and their mental state of mind here at the paperclip as the onslaught of cautions continue coming back from the break is now working caution number 14 through 131 laps of competition. I'm Matt Mettler, your producer tonight, Dave Regal. It has been nothing but cautions through 131 laps of competition tonight, Dave. As now 132 laps on the board, as I was saying, Gitter in the 21 has been the class of the field thus far. But Ryan Samuelson in that 81, who stayed out, used a little pit strategy there to get some great track position, continues to run in that P2 position. Matt DeCiani, Resides in that third place position. Savaniano in fourth. Chris Davis running out your top five. Sean Rockin' Rogers in sixth. Kavaja Holt residing in seventh. Hodison in that 93 machine is eighth. Anderson in that interstate batteries ride was up near the front. Now finds himself plotted in ninth. And Belk in the 50 rounds out your top 10. And just outside, Godzilla looking to make an appearance is he is in that 11th place position, poised to strike and crack the top 10 here as we get back to Green Blank Race. That's absolutely fitting. Gotta keep them separated. Taking a look there at Beast Mode Performance. I want to thank everyone for coming out and playing with us here tonight in the YouTube side of things. All the usual su uh, suspects showing up tonight. And of course, you got some friends. Bring them over to the SRM family so we can find some more good fo followers, good viewers like you. We try to bring this high-flying racing action to each and everyone who wants to be a part of the SNN Cup Series broadcast right here on SRM as we get this field re-racked, restacked, ready to go green one more time. Was that the offspring and you got to keep them separated? Yes, it was. Actually, it's called Come Out and Play. Well, uh, listen, maybe they're going to... I just heard on race radio, I mean, just in case Captain Obvious couldn't be more obvious. 
somebody, <laughs> and I, I know whose voice it is, and I love him to death, so I won't put him out on Front Street. But somebody just said, you know, we're getting really good at getting lined back up. I friggin' hope so after this many cautions. Oh, look, 15, here we go! <laughs> A year ago, in this very race... 30... Boom. Three cautions, if I remember correctly. You do remember correctly. 33 cautions. Yours truly started in 30th and finished 18th in a miracle. Did I at least finish every lap? Oh, God. No. You, I think you were a couple laps down, but uh, you were running at the end. Yeah, I went into a Dairy Queen. No, I wasn't running at the end. It shows that I went to Dairy Queen land. I was the last car disqualified. If that was the case, then it had to happen very late in that race. Yeah, it was but, uh, 82 to go. Yeah, that was, a, go. that was a broadcast marathon uh, between myself and the late, great Tony Trapasso. Uh, the last time we were here at Martinsville, and it's uh, it has all the signs of uh, going the distance again. Hey, uh, y you know... <laughs> You know, when you say late, great, uh, I'm sitting here next to my my Tony Bear, if you will. Um, and, of course, it, this was just such a joy to have. And hold on a second, folks. Let's see if you can hear this. Time to wake the bike herd and dust the five-point harness. Grandma, grab that popcorn. It's time to get it on. Bike fans. Unfortunately, if uh, Tony Bear is giving all of his uh, signature calls, I am unable to hear it. Well, if you couldn't hear it, then nobody else could. That's a shame. But the beauty of, you know, broadcasting, you know, is we have a ton of tape and are able to relive those moments whenever we like to, as I do often. Uh, you know, I sit and I think, because we might as well just, we're, we're doing this show now. Yes, there's a race going on. Yes, Patrick Gitter's the leader. Ryan Samuelson is is in P2, Deciani's in third. That's all you need to know, folks. Just a few more laps until the next caution. We might as well do this show instead. Uh, you know, I, I, I sit here and I think about the first race that he and I worked to the very last time he and I spoke. And, um, you know, and that Sunday night I was, you know, working another race. And, and it's just one of those situations where you wonder where we would be today had he not passed. Dave, I, you know, it's, I don't want to say it's funny you mentioned that, but uh, I find myself asking myself that question an awful lot. You know, I was, and just to peel back the curtain on, on an emotion here, but John and I, of course, went to his uh, memorial service after his passing. And, you know, kudos to Rebecca for getting us um, in contact with his, with his cousin, um, because... I'm not saying we weren't welcome, but his mother wanted to keep this, like, extremely very uh, family-centered. Um, and John was coming from Detroit, and we were going there come hell or high water. There was no question about it. It was, we're going, whether this woman wants us there or not. And his mother, Michelle, has to be one of the coolest, like, you know, she, she sat down with us at the, at the wake afterward, and she said... You guys, you're going to be my boys. You know, she sat down with us and said, you know, we, we really didn't want you here at first. But after I saw that you had made the trip, I mean, you know, how could we say no? And, <clears throat> you know, Rebecca had opened up that door for us. Um, she was working the Facebook and, you know, trying to find out who's who at the Philadelphia Zoo, essentially. And um, I, I was mad at myself. Um, and I still am to some degree because I think... It really wasn't a bad drive to get up there uh, to Syracuse. It was only four hours from Philly and, well, four and some change. But um, I was mad at myself because I thought, geez, for all the times that he and I talked about, let's go get a garbage plate. And now the Syracuse Chiefs of the International AAA Baseball League are going to be the Syracuse garbage plates for a, a game this season. And I, I think... I should have gone up there. I could, you know. There's always that little bit of you that you wish you could have. Absolutely, and I think when unfortunate situations like that, uh, you know, 
come about however you know it happens it's you know that's gonna be on your mind and you know i'm from that area originally well not specifically syracuse the great lakes region but uh western new york you know about uh 50 60 miles to the west of there and uh you know if i was back in new york still uh, i definitely or hoped i would have you know made the, the drive over there to hang out with him because he was definitely one cool cat and i know he made a big impression on you guys in miami uh for our uh, team uh our team trip retreat and uh certainly a, a personality and someone i miss up here in the broadcast booth is uh you know he brought a different dynamic out of me he uh not to say that you don't either but there was just something, something about working special. with him something special about him that he he made you you know be your best and uh I just remember. forever great go ahead I remember when you when you say it that way. I remember the first you know few weeks that we were together that I wanted to try to out Tony Tony, and I That's... found out that I couldn't. <laughs> no, you're not going to. And he made this <laughs> job so easy because I didn't have to. It, it was almost effortless. It's just like when I work with you, and I, I mean that from the deepest part of my very shallow heart tonight because you know this this race has just edged away everything in my body, but. I say that from the deepest part of my heart that, that working with you and with him and with a few of our other teammates here at SRM, you make this job easy to do. We can sit here on lap 150 and, you know, whatever we're at now, 47 cautions, something to that effect. We'll wait until the next one pops up before I look that number up. But, you know, he made, he made me want to come to work on, on a Sunday night or on a Monday night. Well said. You, you didn't want to let him down, and Here he, he comes. made caution number sixteen. Number sixteen. I feel like you know, we need a machine that just goes bing. You know, I have an idea. Maybe we can get these guys in the YouTube chat involved. I don't know if this is necessarily um, against maybe terms of service perhaps on the streaming side of things but maybe we could get like a real-time betting going you know we can start placing bets on when the next caution flag is going to come out and uh we can start putting a wager on it and uh i'm kind of like how under right now it's six and a half six and a half laps. <laughs> i don't care if this violates youtube's policy <laughs> you know kind of like DraftKings does with like you know uh in you know the in quarter uh betting i forget exactly what it's called but uh just to try to make it interesting, keep it engaging. Yeah, I, you know, at this point in the race, it's more of a matter of, uh, you know, trying to keep things, we'll say, interesting. You put a different spin on it, a new twist, another layer. I'd like to think that we are full of nothing but layers here on <laughs> Sim Racing Media. I could call us the onion, but that's already taken. Yeah, we can't use that. We can. It's just we're going to get in trouble for it. Uh, static speed shops already in. Next caution coming out in four to five laps. And Allen is going to take the over at six and a half. We suddenly <laughs> see <laughs> it just like that. <laughs> we have Matt new life in the Matt YouTube. For Matt Alan. Mettler has figured it out, folks. <laughs> we just needed in race betting. What on God's green earth have we devolved to? I mean, hey, they got it in DraftKings and, you know, uh, for every other sport. Why not create our own for sim racing? This does not reflect the mentality level of uh, those of us at Sim Racing Media, but the Allen experience would like a parfait. I think he means parlay. Uh, or he's thinking about Dairy Queen. He wants a parfait from Dairy Queen. Well, we he's haven't thinking... seen a whole lot of those tonight yet as we still have because I haven't checked in a while. 26 drivers on the lead lap from uh, Patrick Gitter all the way back to McAdoo, Pennsylvania's very own John Wilco. We're going to get a chance here uh, deeper into the race to start talking to some of these drivers since we're going to have time to do it. As uh, right now, tempers are kind of flaring, so it makes it, it, makes it a little dangerous to start talking yep. to these fellas. But I, too, like to live dangerously. So it is Bob Pockris. All those times he uh, 
went down there and poked the bear that was Kurt Busch after he had an incident on the racetrack. And, and look at the the fireworks and great content that is still <laughs> available today from all those years ago. But, but what Dave's saying is that's kind of why maybe you don't necessarily want to do that when it's hot and heavy because, you know, you're going to get the in-the-moment uh, reaction, and sometimes that's not always uh, friendly uh, for the broadcast environment, if you will. No, but we'll watch a little bit of racing here before we go down the next rabbit hole because this this is going to be like a minefield of rabbit holes as we go deeper into the night. Lap 156, 157 when the green flag flies. Patrick Ginner crosses the start-finish line, and for Caution some reason... Caution back in the... Here we go again. Oh, my, we're not even, <laughs> we can't even get the field across the line. <laughs> well, one person earlier said that uh, they were doing a pretty good job getting themselves lined back up, but obviously that has now gone out the yeah. window. All of yeah. the wheels have come off, and this is where we are. And see, everybody lost that place to bet. That means we're up. The broadcast crew is currently ahead right now. Have you ever been to a Turkish bath? I'm almost scared. Do you like uh, Do you like gladiator movies? Yes, yes, I do. <laughs> Remember the the white zone is for loading and unloading only. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, if you if you haven't done so already, make sure that you check out the movie Airplane. It's a classic. Leslie Nielsen at one of his finest performances. Did you know who the old lady is that can speak jive? I've only ever saw that movie once, and I want to say oh. there was a... Oh, my goodness! Savignano just bites the wall, but he keeps it pushing forward. As we look from above here, from our blimp, the old lady that can speak jive is the woman who played June Cleaver. That's what makes that so funny. I never knew it until just recently Leave it to Beaver? something. Leave it to Beaver. Yes. So... Basically, the quintessential Midwestern white woman of the 50s can somehow speak jive. And that's it. As soon as I, I read that and learned it, I cracked up laughing. Well, I guess if you want a movie that's based around blow up pilots in June Cleaver in an airplane that does everything it's not supposed to do in a 70s humor setting, that movie is 100% YOU. And Dave is gone. Nope, Dave is right back. I was actually oh, just checking you. in with my Jedi Master, Bob <laughs> Nestor. The last great Jedi, Bob Nestor. You know what? That's how I'm, I'm going to shout him out because I feel like Bob doesn't get enough credit. First off, he's he more does than not. a Jedi Master. He's like my drug dealer. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> For talk, starters. He's, For he's starters. talking about I came, into skittles, this. Right? I came into this because my, my Xbox died and I was ready to go buy a new Xbox. <clears throat> okay. Bob said, why bother getting another console just by a PC? I agree. And I said, why would I do that? And he goes, because then instead of playing NASCAR Heat, you can go on iRacing. And I said, what's that? And then the pandemic uh -huh. hit and I knew. Whoa. So, he, you know, we wind up, you know talks me through what to purchase over at Micro Center down in St. David's just a few minutes away. Uh, I wind up uh, taking my tax refund and purchasing the rest of everything I wanted. And then he <laughs> gave me his old rig, which was a, which is a, uh, a next level racing rig. It still sits upstairs. Oh, Jen's 17 on the board. And uh, yep, there we are. Caution 17. Thank you, sir. No problem. So then it was like, you know, I, I said to him, hey, listen, I found this league that I want to join. It's a truck league. And then Bob gets into the truck league with me. And then Chris sees that it's Bob. And then next thing you know, we're running all three series. And it was almost like there, there was a period in time where Bob would text me and go, you want to go online? And I just sit there. All it, all it took was a text from Bob and I was online. Well, I mean, think about it. I mean, you were stuck playing horribly coded video games with physics that didn't even deserve to be mainstream at that point in time because they were so bad racing on a controller to the latest and greatest sim racing application piece of software out there 
it's of course you were hooked on it. I mean, I remember when I first found iRacing, which was in mid-2008, I want to say. And uh, I had no idea what it was. And I was like, oh, subscription-based? Let's try it. And I had no idea what I was getting into. I had the Xbox 360 controller. And then I soon realized I was in way over my head. Yeah. But being the NASCAR enthusiast that I was, I could not get rid of it. I had, I had to stay. And uh, so glad that I did because I wouldn't have all these great relationships and all the friends that I have made over the years without iRacing. And uh, I-, I couldn't imagine my life without it, to be quite frank. You know, and that's exactly right. The, the first night that I sat down, I was working with a single monitor in the corner of my, of my old bedroom uh, two apartments ago. And it was like I had snorted computer chips and was high as a kite. <laughs> He was, he was, he was taking long lines of the Pentium 3s. <laughs> listen, we, we, we would get done work at like, you know, 5 o'clock-ish, and by 6.30, I'd be sitting on the couch, you know, playing with the kids or whatever, and I'd get the text. Oh, got, got to go. Got, got to go do this. I yeah. take that back. That was more Core 2 duo. Ah, there it is. And, it, you know, so next thing you know, I wind up racing in this league at all three levels. I hated the Xfinity car at the time. Now I love it. But I hated the Xfinity car at the time, and Bob had just taken over as the commissioner of MNN and said, you want to broadcast it instead of race it? Because he knew that I was an awful driver. And, <laughs> and I said, Awful driver? Great commentator. <laughs> well, it, th- that's usually what happens. I would like to point out almost everybody in the NASCAR booth. Almost. Myself included. The only thing got, I got going for me is I can plate race. That's it. Everything else, I'm horrible. Well, it, he, he gave me a shot to call MNN, and it turns out that I wasn't half bad. And then, of course, you know, sends me a message. I, could, I can probably still run my text back <clears throat> and find the one that says that SRM is hiring. And next thing you know, here I am in a booth. It was, it was Western States Racing League with Tony, and, and the rest is just history. But, it, you know, so then fast forward to last year. I hang the gloves up. I'm just going to broadcast. And then... Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I, well, Bob brought back my old wheel and pedals because he was done using them for a while. And um, I said, I, I texted him last weekend and I said, crap, you know, I, I'm missing one of these cables. And he's like, well, you want to you want to come up here? I, I was on call at the time. And I was like, yeah, he had to come down here for something else. Next thing you know, he's dropping this off like a drug dealer at the front door. And I put the <laughs> wheel on the desk and it was... It was almost like I was high again. I got my fix. And you know what? The man gave me a lot of chances, both in the real world and the iRacing world. And I love him to death for it. The bottom line is greatest mentor, greatest iRacing mentor, you know, real world and iRacing mentor. Anybody could have ever asked for a a tip of the cap to to Bob for, for helping me through life and the sim world. And caution flags tonight. Yeah, yeah. I mean, without that story, we wouldn't have gotten through the last, I don't know, what are we on, lap six? We're close. But you know what? I I wish I had a Bob Nestor. I don't really have someone like that, but uh, it would. I could see where the, the benefits uh, are endless. You know, um, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I'll tell you how I got into broadcasting in SRM. So... A good friend of mine I was in the military with um, took a job back up where I'm from in Buffalo, New York. And uh, fortunately, he passed away from a massive heart attack. He had some weight issues post-military from some problems that uh, he had uh, basically uh, he suffered through uh, active duty. And he put a lot of weight on in a short period of time and uh, tragically passed away. And uh, all of his family was in Florida. He's in New York. And he was in, he loved NASCAR. And I said to myself, I wonder if we can put something together on iRacing, you know, a memorial race. And uh, the next thing I know, um, can we get it broadcasted? I had no idea this stuff really even existed. The only time I even raced in a league that was broadcasted was back in Chris Cup 2019, which... Jonathan Leach raced it with me. No idea that he, you know, about SRM. So I happened to reach out to him 
And lo and behold, I found out about SRM. SRM picks up the broadcast. Um, we do his race. They did a great job. And a couple laps before it was over, I crashed out. And I was so upset because, you know, it's my best friend's race, this, that, the other. And they pulled me up into the booth. And I start talking with, uh, with it was Mike DeMoney at the time. And the, the, uh, the thing with Chris and I, he always used to joke and say, Matt, you need to be a NASCAR commentator. And I was like, dude, I can't do that. I was like, I don't have the skill for that. He's like, oh, yes, you can. And lo and behold, at the conclusion of the race, I forget how it came about, but it was either Mike that said to me, hey, you ever try commentating? And lo and behold, that's how I got the start with SRM in broadcasting. Um, was from my friend's uh, passing in that memorial race. Well, it is funny how things work out like that. You know, you're like a phoenix out of the ashes, rise something new. And here we are, caution number 18, 17th for cause. We're staying on brand, it seems, about every 10 laps. I'm sure the YouTube experts are uh, keeping us up to date on the uh, on the ratio here. Green flag laps to caution sequences is 182 now in the books. Oh, we're going to change it up this time. Multiple cars are going to dive down pit road here, being led by Gitter. There's Samuelson, Jet, DeCiani. Look, Here's they're coming Kibaka down Holt. pit road. Look at that. We're doing we're doing something different. It's been a minute. Uh, look at that right there. Patrick Gitter coming on, coming on down pit road here on 183. Coincidentally enough, the highway that I grew up alongside of. <laughs> Just for argument's sake. But uh, Patrick Gitter going to come down. Looks like he's going to get four tires and attack a go fast. The same goes for the 14 of Matt DeCiani. The 18 comes in as well. Bobby Anderson. Those are your front three drivers from qualifying as DeCiani, Gitter, and now, and oh, Anderson gets stuck on pit road for a little bit longer here. Ooh. Yeah, that's going to cost him a lot of track position there. He's still not off of pit road. He's still in the box. He must have some kind of damage that he's decided to take. And if you really think about it, he might as well get it done now. As we're going to hop back up here to Eric Papineau, who's, ah, yeah, he's going to squirt out of here just in time. Where have I seen that paint scheme before? Made famous by Daryl Waltrip, the tide ride. You know what? When I was a kid, I, of course, I, I didn't grow up knowing DW the driver, really. I uh, my, first, my first race that I watched from start to finish happened to be February 18th, 2001. But right. um, I got to know DW, of course, like we all did in our generation on TV. There is a guy who was excited to be at the racetrack no matter where we were, no matter what we're doing, every single week. And, and that love of racing, of, of camaraderie, of teammates just bled through the microphone every week from DW. And, um, you know, also a man of great faith. And he and his wife, Stevie, correct. of course, now retired and able to kind of enjoy life uh, down there in North Carolina. But, I mean, the tide ride to me, I'm looking at it thinking about the icky shuffle down in Daytona. That's right, 1990. Or was it 89? 89. It was 89 or 90. And then, you know, if you're newer to NASCAR, you may associate the tie ride with Ricky Craven, uh, one of the closest finishes in NASCAR history up until Atlanta. You know, Atlanta happened a couple uh, short, uh, well, a few weeks ago now, as uh, him and Kurt Busch uh, had one of the best finishes ever. That nose in the Pontiac then was kicked out just a little bit more than the Fords, and that got him the win. Do you really believe also, that? Are you one of those people that believe just the Pontiac body style is what got him? I have 100%, without a doubt. I can only imagine why we now have, if you take the, the decals off of these cars, somehow they're all identical now. Well, these cars are, but not, not then. No, 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 not then. That's what I'm saying. I can only imagine that that's one of the things that caused them to start changing the body styles of these race cars. Right. You're, I mean, they didn't call it the twisted sister car for nothing. Is the green flag back in the air and looking like DW out here at Martinsville back in the day? As he gets a wonderful jump. Davis in that second place position. Where did he come from? Beast mode performance representing here in primetime tonight. 
as he's trying to run down the fast man here on lap 188, Pompano is popping off some great lap times that last time by. Dave Regal, check that out, a 1937. That is the That's fastest lap time. And caution, as I was just going to comment on, that was his fastest lap or best lap inside the top six, is that pace car just has to make sure it leads the most laps tonight. Check We're going to slow out. it back down once again. Check this out. DW happens to have the most poles here at Martinsville with eight. More than Jeff Gordon. More than Jeff Gordon. Jeff Gordon has the most top tens. Richard Petty has the most wins with 15. Richard Petty also has the most top fives at 30. And the most starts at 67. And if you think about that, that means that in 67 starts in round numbers... Basically, that's 25% of the time that he came here, he had a 25% chance of beating the field. Those are really good odds. That is that is a pretty good odd there. As I'm taking a look here at DW's record, wow. Yeah, he was, I mean, DW, let's see here, started, finished. Here we go. He's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10. His first win here came in the Die Guard car in 1976. Then again in 78, 80. Then went back to back in 83 and 82, 84, 87, 88 through 89. Swept four races here. <laughs> Incredible. Wow. That's, you that's just impressive. You don't see that anymore in, in, in modern-day NASCAR, not like you did back then. No, and you have you to know, remember, back in that time, they weren't driving, quote-unquote, equal cars. You, you really no, had to they were not. these things around. I mean, you literally went and built a body to hang, you know, built the, the body to hang on a frame. Right. You built that chassis, uh, all, all that tubular metal in-house, and then you hung the sheet metal on it, just like you see in Days of Thunder. Dave, you're absolutely right. You know, if you were fortunate enough, you had your own engine development team. I mean, that car was, you know, if you had the funding, that car was 100% made by you and you alone. And that couldn't be further from the product on the racetrack today. Yeah, you know, and I think that that's one of the, that's one of the most exciting things about looking at the history of NASCAR. And, you know, NASCAR, a lot like baseball, and maybe that's why I gravitate to this sport the way that I do, takes care of its history. You know, I have yet to get to Charlotte, but I'd like to make that uh, make that pilgrimage, if you will. But you won't it, be disappointed. <clears throat> you know, I, I look at what NASCAR does. It, you know, they bring back the old drivers. They make sure that those people are getting the recognition for what they do. And they do such a great job doing it. Yeah, I, it, you know, at this rate, you know. I look at what they do with the historic drivers. I look at, you know, how they take care of, of course, the uh, the king himself. And, Richard uh, you Petty. know, it's just incredible. And it transcends, you know, generations. Of course, the Cars movie franchise from Disney, you know, brought a lot of these drivers, you know, to the next generation of uh, race fans, hopefully. And uh, I do want to make a quick shout out here to those that are complaining on race radio about the amount of ads or... The fact that we didn't run the last replay from the last caution. Too bad. Too freaking bad. We've had enough cautions. We're just trying to get through this just like you are down the racetrack. Relax yourself and drive the car. Don't worry about what we're doing. Maybe that's the problem. We're worried about the broadcast, not managing our race car on the racetrack. I, I, you know, the, there's that new TikTok thing that says, say the weird thing. I did. Well... Hey, stay in the weird thing. Well, how about that 84? No, no. Oh, my God. Noah Hamilton Jr. It says no, Noah Hamilton, Mr. here in SDK. He is suddenly up 10 spots inside that eighth place position. Colorado Springs being represented here in the Stacy Strong Cup Series as he is fending off the 70 of Dylan Banks. This just inside the top 10. Yeah, don't look now, folks, but we've already passed the stage caution. We're into stage three now. 
And uh, Noah Hamilton right now running in eighth position. Let's take a look now through our field as we haven't gotten a chance to do that in a while as they're now all stretching themselves out. Eric Papineau in 17th out of Williamsburg, Virginia leads the way. Chris Davis in second position from Koskinong, uh, Missouri in second. Oh, look, a caution. Chad yep. Sander in third, Patrick Gitter in fourth, Michael Witt in sixth, Matt DeCiani in seventh, Ryan Samuelson in eighth, Noah Hamilton, as we just mentioned, in ninth, and uh, Dylan Banks and Matt Long rounding out your top ten as we're going to take a look here and see what brought this one out. I can only imagine. Go to the eye in the sky. Back to the SRM instant replay here. Just got Seaman loose off loose. the top. Tried to over, accidentally overcorrect it there. The six got involved. And we I'm unfortunately card. sure for the six's sake, that may have been the, uh, the trip to Dairy Queen land. Yes, he's been involved in a lot of the calamity. 59 just got it a little too spicy coming off the corner. And the six is going to just bonsai it in there. He makes contact, eats the safer barrier, and disappears. And that is a telltale sign of the Dairy Queen Award being awarded. Yeah, 20 cautions so far out of 200 laps. I made the... The loose reference earlier that it seemed like it was once every 10 laps, but here we are, killing it. And uh, the Allen experience in our YouTube.com live chat says that they wish a green flag long run would arise from the ashes. <laughs> ah, there's the iceberg in the YouTube chat. My broadcast partner from Racers Elite Money Racing last night had a great time. Dave, we went caution free at Talladega, money racing, 75 laps, flag to flag. I went flag to flag on Thursday night. Uh, where the heck were we? We were flag to flag Thursday night, and I want to say it was Richmond. What? Yep. Hold on. <laughs> that is incredible. Running it back. I got to look back for this because I was fairly impressed. Well, while you're looking for that, I mean, we never had the big one. Yeah, it was you know, Racer's we... Cup. It was Racer's Cup on Thursday night, so let me see their schedule here because I you have to forgive me, folks. I don't have a, a memory like a like an elephant. I do forget. Uh, let's see. Where were we? That can't be right. Well, we're, right now we're coming down the back stretch. Well, that's fine. They'll still be there. <laughs> yes, they will. Davis doing a great job Rockingham. here. Rockingham. It was flag to flag at Rockingham. The Rock. Yes. There's a there's a track from the past that I'm glad that's being rekindled, rejuvenated, like North Wilkesboro. You know, here's the here's the beauty to iRacing. racing. We have the ability in this in this format to first of all take some of these racetracks and make them eternal. They will never, ever die because die. they will always be sitting in an I&I &I file. The other thing is we're able to generate enough interest on our platform alone here on iRacing to get them re, you know, resurrected, essentially, in the real world. Of course, as, as to your point, North Wilkesboro, you know, of course, it's been here on the service. And then all of a sudden it goes from the iRacing.com membership service to back to the real world and did you see what they found under the bleachers the uh, moonshine <laughs> just in case there was ever any question that this sport didn't rise out of running illegal liquor th through the south that's Roof. the one as Roof we take a look right now not to interrupt you but michael witt side by side now with noah hamilton as he takes the 88 lipton machine he's going to sip that tea as he goes down the back chute here on lap 205 we're finally past the halfway point as he yeah, is chasing down the 14 of Matt DeCiani, who's single file now, right behind Chris Davis. And Davis is trying to get in with Patrick Gitter. As Matt Long and Noah Hamilton still going at it. A lot of the oh. field still side by side. It's going to happen again, folks. It's bound to happen again. As it we still have 26 happen. drivers on the lead lap here. 
Lap 206 so far. Dave Regal and Matt Mettler with you here in the Tony. Oh, Capaz there it goes. It's the full blue parking lot. And there's flames and there's fire and all hell is breaking loose on the backstretch. It looks like it's seen out of deliverance. As it is a full blown hot dumpster fire. Ned Beatty and I was going to say we were going to break the curse. Well, look and at this. Then... They were three wide. Of course, something bad was going to happen. Oh, he gets his face knocked off. He, oh, my God. Randy Belk deciding that uh, he thought he knew what was going on here. Let's see. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. If you can't go three wide once, you can't go do it twice, and you can't go four wide, I don't know why we keep... Tr oh, my God. Did you see the hit? The 50 took. Here we are with the 50. They're three wide in front of him. He now becomes the meat. He bounces off the 93 into the into the 84. Oh. Sorry, the 94. I guarantee, I guarantee you he blew his biscuits all over the inside of that race car. It, oh. Can you only imagine? Let's see if we can see this again here from the drone cam. I mean, hopefully we he didn't stretch. have his. Hopefully he doesn't have a, a direct drive wheel and had his thumb sitting in the uh, holes because that'd break a finger. Watch this shot. Oh. I mean, <laughs> let's see if I can look at this from another angle since we don't want anybody to miss anything because there are hurt feelings in the drivers chat. And everybody knows how much I care about your feelings here in the broadcast booth after caution number 21. We've seen some absolutely insane hits and crashes tonight that some people would have a hard time believing if you weren't able to go back to this and show them. I mean, this is this is not the way that this league races traditionally. No, it's not. This is not what the, the product that they're known for. It's actually quite the opposite. I mean, normally these guys are racing hard, close quarters, but clean. And it is absolutely dynamic. It is electric. It is the atmosphere is the only place makes you makes it be the only place you want to be on Sunday night. Unfortunately, that is just not the case tonight. As uh, Patrick Gitter getting good in the neighborhood once again leading here at martinsville papano currently runs in that second spot up 15 spots biggest mover of the race chris davis in third up 31 spots matt DeCiani, he's lost a couple to the board as he started uh in p2 in that fourth place position and michael witt uh paying homage to dale jr's last ride with his paint scheme on the 88 Currently resides in that sixth place position. Matt Long, currently seventh. Eighth belongs to Dylan Banks. The 93 of Tane Hodson, Hodison, up 13 spots is ninth. And rounding out your top 10, Kavaja Holt in that double zero, Dave. Ding dong, delivery here to the Tony Trapasso Memorial Broadcast booth. Wawa, a fine food purveyor here in the southeastern Pennsylvania area. As uh, Wawa serves pizza, and it's pretty good. Yeah, Wawa suddenly has taken over the state of Florida by storm. They are everywhere. You're welcome. It's not so bad, though. Listen, if you need to go get yourself some gas, cigarettes, a cup of coffee, and you're still hungry for lunch, Wawa is the place to go. One-stop shopping for the, uh, for the busy human. As we take a look back here at Tane Hodison in the 93, alongside of Kavaja Holt. Now, they're going to be throwing, throwing haymakers at each other maybe later on in this race. But right now, it looks like the 93 able to slide on by for the time being. And he's going to put the 17 of Eric Papineau in the crosshairs as Papineau is side-by-side -side with Dylan Banks. You would, you would almost think that many of these drivers, as I just got the hiccups, that's great. Haven't even eaten yet. Oh! There goes Samuelson. He, Samuelson. Oh, he came to a complete stop. That's going to throw a caution as now my timing and scoring just crashed. That's fine. You didn't miss anything except for caution number 22. 22 on the board. Remember, <clears throat> the record we are chasing is 33 set last year at this same racetrack. 
do we beat it tonight? Uh, you let know, us know in the comments. Yeah, let us know in the comments if we're going to get to caution number 33. That is the all-time record. And if you go back to last year, this race was the one that was just like, what planet are we on? What is happening right now? It was right here at Martinsville. And I thought for certain, you know. As we're going to quick take a chat here with Patrick Gitter as we work caution number 22. Hey, Patrick, it's Dave and Matt up in the booth. You got us. Hey, got gotcha, you guys. Well, I've already v vented my own anger over the air as I hear people being very butthurt over, uh, you know, our discussion up here as you're trying to keep it as interesting as possible. How are things down on the racetrack itself? Um, I, a lot of it's just awareness. You just got to know who you're around and um, who might be a little bit more difficult to pass than others. And so, I mean, been able to keep it clean for the most part. Had a few uh, hiccups here and there, but overall... Um, <laughs> Just kind of bobbing and weaving right now. Yeah, you know, hey Patrick, your recovery from, drive. Sorry about that. Go ahead, Matt. Hey, Patrick, Matt up in the booth. For some of the new iRacers that are watching right now, you mentioned that awareness. What? How do you go about doing that, and what's the best way to do that so you can keep yourself out of trouble here at a place like Martinsville? Uh, I think it's, it's especially on these restarts, like you got to kind of look around and get a feel for who's around you, how they're driving the car, like here especially. I mean, I noticed there were a few guys a few restarts ago, and I was trying to get up to the front where you know, maybe they were blowing the corner into three, driving it in deep or whatever, and sometimes there just comes a point where you say, all right, they're going to keep blowing the corner. Maybe I back off, get in the spot, and then hopefully they leave the bottom open as a result later on. So sometimes it's just picking battles, figuring out when to make a move. Yeah, so hopefully when they decide to blow the corner, they're not taking you out with them. Yeah, exactly, yep. <laughs> yeah. That's some great insight from a veteran driver who's done a great job here once again tonight. That's Patrick Gitter, currently your leader, leader and pole sitter as we get ready to go back green. Absolutely, and Patrick, as you get ready to go back green flag racing, you're more than welcome to let the guys in race radio know that it's not my fault that we're on caution number 22. So <laughs> exactly, <laughs> they're more than welcome to go take a chill pill and go lay down. Yeah, there you go. That's right. Uh, I hope we get it. Get, get some good racing, long runs here. Uh, we'll see what happens. But I'm I'm still optimistic. Well, uh, it'd be interesting to see how things play out as this field kind of ends out a little bit. All right, buddy. Good luck the rest of the way. All and right. that man's yeah. practicing what he's preaching. Listen how calm his voice is in that race car, in spite of all the chaos and pandemonium out there on the racetrack. He is calm, he is focused, and that is what it takes, especially uh, in a race like this. Yeah, you know, these drivers have spent a lot of time, you know, practicing for this night, and I can only imagine, because I was a terrible driver myself, I can only imagine, you know, how frustrating it must be to put, you know, all of these laps in, to put all of this work in, and then still wind up, you know, getting wrecked out, you know, by... A rough night oh, here. Oh no! They're doing the. <laughs> did you see what happened on the restart of the top line? I did, I did not. I was changing screens. What happened? <laughs> they they just donkey cogged each other <laughs> three or four times. You know, like the the uh, accordion effect. Just you know, just cha ching cha ching. <laughs> well, they. Said, I don't know. Oh, here we go. Caution number twenty three. That's that must be our fault. I can't believe. The, uh, the 14 there didn't get a restart violation as he got shot like he was at a super speedway. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, since we have time for it. You know that term we use, a one 2 whack-a-mole situation? Yep. Multiply that by about four. Watch this. Top shelf where Mama hides the cookies. Coming to the green here. This was the last re Oh, my. Just wait. <laughs> <laughs> happens whoopsie hey you got it you know what for me laughter is the best cure see and and I, you know, I thought that it was chicken cock whiskey well that's that's for another time <laughs> as we're taking a look at what brought this caution out goodness gracious i hope nobody overcooked the chicken oh no there goes oh, the 17 around him of eric Papineau. he overcooked and stuffed the bird on that one. Oh my is that is that even a thing can you stuff the bird 
I know you can flip the bird. Oh, yeah, you can stuff the bird. That's how my, that's how my children were conceived. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, I'm waiting for that to go viral. <laughs> Yeah. You know, Alan Alan's is gonna have to clip hard. lap two, uh, two twenty-four. I mean, I don't think I've seen anyone that is sim racing media twenty-four-seven quite like Alan. You know, if you're ever feeling lonely and you're in our Discord, if you log on to Discord, there's a pretty fair chance that you're going to find Alan hanging out. And you know what? That's, that's pretty cool. It doesn't matter when. I can only I'll wake up at like, thinks. I'll wake up at like 4 o'clock in the morning, and I'll just check my phone really quick, and, and there he is. And I'm like, wow, he is dedicated. That is the new level. Oh, it's a level, all right. It's a level, Alice. Here's a fun one. Do you know how many episodes of the Honeymooners were ever were ever filmed? I I don't have the slightest clue. So I was watching I was watching um, uh, uh, Facebook Reels, you know, yep. and just happened to catch um, Jackie Gleason. <clears throat> they only actually ran from October of 1955 to September of 1956. That's that, it? That's it. They only ran like, hold on, I'm going to look here. It was like 30 episodes? Oh, wait, 39. 39 episodes. But, you know, the way that we talk about the Honeymooners, you would think that they ran like 14 seasons on CBS. Right. It was like some great, you know, like up there with like Friends and some of the other long-running uh, sitcoms and shows. Yeah. It was the, Get Her. I see cars listing as crashing, but we stay green. Side they're by crashing, side goes the crashing. 93 and the 70. Now so all of a just... sudden, Tane Hodison and Michael Witt side by side coming down the back chute. As it looks like Michael Witt in that Dale Jr. throwback is trying to look here to the inside. He's not going to give that up from Tane Hodison, Matt. Yeah, Ford on Chevy action there, still hot and heavy. 88 has the preferred lane, but the 93 able to keep it running on the high side. Now we're going back to this battle with Ryan Samuelson. Chevrolet on Chevrolet action. Yeah, not a problem. We're going to change it up here. We're going to go to what we like to call all out or exciting. Tane Hodison here in the 15 continues as we now take covers of the 93 and that up that 15 positions now, Dave. He's now inside the top 10 in that seventh place position. Sean Rogers kissing that left rear quarter panel of the 93 driven by Tane Hodison as they're side by side wide goes the 88 of Michael Witt as he comes back in to continue battling alongside the 74 working lap 231 of 400 as we're two hours into this piece it's going to be a long night if it hasn't been so already whoa more contact between Sean Rogers and Ooh. Michael Witt yeah, I was just getting ready to talk about Sean Rogers there. Beast mode performance now up three spots. He's starting to he's starting to feel that vibe and come alive in the 44. And he's kind of right on cue, if you ask me. This is the time of the race when he really starts to make an initiative to get towards the front, as he often does. And he's in a heck of a battle right now. He's going to clear the 88, check the box. There's going to be another spot for that 44 as he continues his march towards the front. One, sp one spot outside of the top five as he resides in that sixth place position. And here they go around. The 90 gets disqualified on caution number 24. That's Anthony Savignano. Let's see what happens here as we go to the replay. Watch Savignano. That's the 97 of Matt Long just behind him. Ooh, something snapped in there. 
Yes, there was parts raining down to the bleachers. The, something had to have snapped in Savignano's cockpit. Let's take a look. Watch this wheel. He comes Go through. on board. The car just bit, and when he corrected it, it took off the other way. Violently. But that's... That's, you know, I find that kind of strange how we've seen this happen now, David, a few times tonight. And each time that's happened, I mean, we've seen wrecks that were typically beyond the capabilities of Martinsville. Mainly that first one where we had a car take flight. With a very similar incident. Trying to look now and see who we can get a hold of here. We're going to get a hold of Sean Rogers since... Uh... His girlfriend is usually here taking an eye on things. I mean, religiously here. I mean, you talk about having support. I mean, she is here each and every time. You know, no matter what it takes, she is here supporting him. And uh, I just cannot commend her enough for that. Hey, Sean, it's David Matt up in the booth. You got us. Yeah, I do. How's it going, guys? Not bad. We just saw that Amanda commented again, which means that she's been paying attention to this. Uh, well, we'll call it a race, but it looks more like a mess from up here in the booth. How are things going for you down here in the 44? It's uh, It's been a rough one. Um, been bounced around, banged around uh, plenty of times. Uh, holding on with 24X, so I might not even see the end of this thing. But uh, car is fast. Um, I was able to come back through the field after um, getting wrecked. So... Uh, yeah, it's, it's fun. Just a good old-fashioned short track racing. Yeah, that's rough to hang on to, you know, with that 24X here at a place like Martinsville. But at the same time, you also don't want to be hemorrhaging spots to stay out of trouble. No, yeah, it's definitely a delicate balance. I've kind of accepted my fate, and I'm going to try to go as far as I can. Um, if through by some miracle I can make it through, uh, that'd be great. But we'll see what happens. Um, but, you know, just keep... Keep trudging forward and see see what we can't make of it. All right, my friend. Well, listen, good luck the rest of the way. Hopefully you can keep that 24X under control. And as I told Gitter a few minutes ago when we got a chance to talk to him, I know that a few people were, were in race radio complaining about the broadcast tonight and the fact that we've kind of gone down a, a, a bunch of rabbit holes. But you're more than welcome to uh, let them know on race radio that it wasn't us that caused 24 cautions. <laughs> exactly, yeah, this has been quite the mess. <laughs> well, all right, buddy, listen, good luck the rest of the way, and hopefully we'll see you on the other side. Sounds good, guys. Have a good one. Yeah. And I'm fairly confident we do see Sean Rogers come out the other side, Dave. He's, he's so good at, at navigating through the storm. He can, he can fit that car through holes that, you know, others can't, and I've seen him do it time and time again. I hope I don't jinx him. But uh, certainly that is within his capabilities as we go back green. And I have now suddenly spawned in a race car. What in the world is going on here? It wasn't me. Okay. That's new. <laughs> Moving Something, on. Maybe that's what's going on here on the racetrack. Okay. Maybe people are just spawning. I can tell and you this now, much. I'm sure there are several people I'm, who should never spawn. Well, now I am stuck in my... For, I'm stuck in the cutaway car. All right. Well, while you figure that out... And I will. This is this is new. This is fun. Well, just peeling back the curtain for another layer here. Chris Davis in the 74. He's ready to start exchanging blows with Neil Pearson in the 58. They go side by side. It always kind of feels good when I get to say Pearson on the racetrack. It makes me think of David Pearson. David... Yep. Makes me think about the good old days and the good old boys. As we take a look at the good old boys, Matt Long here in the 97, still battling it out with Michael Witt. These guys are not going to let up on one another tonight. It just seems like, you know, at this stage in the race, why, why mess up a good thing? They're back here knocking one another around as they go three wide. Why? Ken Ron, Ken Ron, the meat in this sandwich, comes out atop. Oh, and my eight. God. Here we go oh, again. Three wide with the 88 in the middle. almost got ugly. Ugly? My yeah. goodness. I've seen I've seen lepers that look better than that. I mean, they pulled it off, you know, the first time. The first successful three wide we've seen. They went for it again the second time and almost blew up in their face on entry. Now, you were talking.
as now I've lost my broadcast partner completely. You know, these drivers here in this league, I've talked about it many, many times. This is the kind of driving that we, we are used to seeing. You can go three wide and not kill one another here on the racetrack as Seba Cornez and Ken Ron now go side by side down the back chute. Ken Ron out of Dillsburg, Pennsylvania, one of my fellow statesmen here, working lap number 246, right now running in 20th position. But, you know, in all honesty, if there's somebody that I believe can hold it steady, and now it's two Pennsylvanians side by side as McAdoo, Pennsylvania's very own John Wilco has the Maya Hydro Flask. Chevrolet Camaro. That almost looks like the old uh, singular wireless thing on the front of his car. As Wilco works lap 248, he's now in 20th position just behind Seba Cornez. And uh, I'll tell you what, we'll, hopefully we get a chance to chat with him later. And don't look now, but we talked about it earlier. Patience in this league is what's going to get you, you know, better finishes in this league as Chris Claude is up 20 positions from where he had started back in 30th, currently running in the top 10 just ahead of Nolan Hodgson. So the Fairview, Tennessee native, the HMFIC here in the Stacey Strong Cup Series now make, makes it into the top 10. Nolan Hodgson now looking to work his way around Chris, but, you know, in all honesty, I think maybe this is just the kind of oomph that Chris needed, maybe a, a little bit of encouragement, if you will, as we've worked our way into stage number three now. We're on lap 250 of 400, so a buck and a half to go here. As I'm looking for wherever my broadcast partner may have just disappeared to, it seems like maybe he was disqualified in this race, as some of the other drivers have done tonight. Patrick Gitter, your race leader, ahead of Matt DeCiani and Dylan Banks now, your one, two, three, Sean Rogers, after, you know, we had just talked to him, 24X, so he is in distinct danger of being disqualified, and it would be an absolute sin to see Sean, you know, wind up in Dairy Queen land uh, disqualified after battling his way up here onto the podium or, what, or, you know, nearby the podium as he's just behind the 70 of Dylan Banks. And as we work lap 253, we want to thank everybody for tuning in here to the to the uh, Tony Trapasso Memorial Broadcast booth. As it seems like, yes, perhaps Alan letting us know that perhaps Matt was somehow magically disqualified. You never know. But uh, for Matt Mettler, myself, Dave Regal here in the Tony Trapasso Memorial Broadcast booth, we want to thank everybody for making us a part of your evening. We're going to step aside now and pay some bills on Sim Racing Media, but don't go away. We'll be NASCAR side by side. Gamer 2, what you see and what you hear is what you feel. Butt Kicker, the future is feeling.
Mata. Mas get caught defend. He's got the outside left for the second part, and he can't hold on. Going the long way around. We're going to be three wide for the lead as they all come to the line. Who is going to take it in the end? And here comes Lockwood. He's going to make the move to the outside. Quinn tries to force it off a little bit, but there he goes. It's going to be side by side through turn one. Will he be able to cover him off? He does. Weaving back to the left hand side. Reynolds is trying everything. The kitchen sink is being thrown at it. They're leaning on each other. Coming into turn number three. It's going to be a drag race through three and four. Coming back to the line. Here comes Frisch on the bottom. Richard's going to hold the inside. Tries to be the late breaker here. They're going to be side by side through the final chicane. They bang doors, but keep it clean. As they're still four wide on the run down in the back straightaway. Demerit's looking for a line as well. What is going on in Michigan? No back into the fence. They're still beating and banging. Oh and my to goodness. the line. He is much faster coming through there. Is there damage on Challenger? Abramidas is ahead. Oh. There's going to be a race to the line. Who is going to get it? Pring Garden Weed Preventer. And Preen Garden Weed Preventer Plus Plant Food block weeds before they start and are safe for use around over 400 flowers, vegetables, trees, and shrubs. Best of all, they give you three months of freedom from weeding in just four easy steps. You can apply Preen anytime before or during the growing season. But since it's a weed preventer, not a weed killer, early spring is best. Here's how. Start by removing existing weeds and their roots in the area where you want to apply preen. Sprinkle granules directly onto dry soil, mulch, or stone so that they're evenly spaced. Within 24 hours of applying, integrate the granules into the top layer of soil or mulch or stone-covered bed. Finally, water with a hose or sprinkler or a well-timed soaking rain to activate the protective weed barrier. When activated, Preen creates an invisible weed-fighting barrier just below the soil surface that targets and prevents weed seeds from sprouting and forming roots. People and pets may enter the treated area once dusts have settled and the area is thoroughly dry from watering or first rain. That's it. Now you'll have a beautiful weed-free space and three months to do anything but weeding. Satisfaction guaranteed. Trusted for over 50 years, Preen is America's number one weed preventer brand with weed preventers for every type of garden. Racing isn't easy, but experiencing it is. iRacing puts you in the driver's seat with the industry's leading sim racing game. Drive on laser scan replicas of the greatest racing circuits from around the world. Go head-to-head -head against other drivers chosen by skill-based matchmaking to ensure competitive racing at every level. Compete across all your favorite series. In officially licensed cars, engineered to deliver the most accurate driving experience possible. Join a race or host your own with players from across the globe. Race against the computer or in a league with friends. Feel the thrill behind the wheel. Visit iRacing.com. My name is Leon Kyles. I'm a prostate cancer survivor. I have two adult children, 134, 125, and a wife, and I'm glad to be here today. When I got the initial news of my prostate cancer, it was devastating because I got a phone call from my doctor later, late in the evening and I was wondering why he was calling, so I put it on speakerphone, and me and my wife were sitting there watching the movie, and he just came straight out and said, you got cancer. You know, the first thing that went through my mind was, man, am I gonna make it? So I had a lot of different thoughts going through my mind, you know, I didn't know if I was gonna be able to survive, you know, what was gonna happen with my wife, my kids, and 
you know, I, I, I felt hurt, a lot of pain. Through 211, actually, they gave me the number to Trisha Hope, and which was a great thing because Trisha Hope has been very helpful throughout my process of going through my cancer, going through my surgery. Now it's in remission. I don't have it anymore, no diagnosis. And she really helped me with some bills and, and stuff like that with a grant that I appreciate very much. She um, helped me out, also gave me some uh, referrals to some agencies that could help me out in my city in Anderson. Um, we talked, we had at least, you know, probably over the last few months, at least about six or seven conversations where, you know, she would always have an encouraging word to say, always, you know, telling me to be thankful, you know, and just live your life to the fullest and them the things I've been doing. Anybody that may be experiencing cancer in any shape, form, or fashion, trust God. You have to be patient. You have to make your doc go to your doctor's appointments, and then just you know live your life to the full ex extent. Enjoy yourself, and just keep moving forward because God is there for you. This program is to help cancer patients and you know the donations would be gratefully appreciated because they go through a lot of things and they have a lot of doctor's appointments a lot of bills um, things that you know they can't take care of anymore because of the job situation leave of absences some people never go back to work some people are going through chemo and they need a helping hand. So if you could donate anything to help the Trisha Hope Foundation, it would be greatly appreciated. The most realistic online racing sim ever made. This is iRacing. Detailed laser scan tracks. Fully dynamic, real world cars, and over 50 series to choose from. Six online world championships offering over $400,000 in annual prizes. This is the original eSport racing game. This is iRacing. Welcome back to Martinsville Speedway, where we are working lap number 284 now, caution number 25. Of course, it never seems to fail that as soon as we go to commercial that that's when these drivers get themselves a long green flag run. One of the longest of the evening so far, as, uh, of course, this one just recently coming out. We'll find out what happened here. Dave Regal alongside now the great... Of course, Alan Bergen, as uh, Matt Mettler has had some type of a hardware failure on his end. So we're going to take a look here at uh, Mark Johnston here in the 80s. He just had his chicken stuffed a little bit ago. And now, oh, he catches that curb and boom goes the proverbial dynamite. You can't go that way. And he gets disqualified to boot. Alan, welcome here into the Tony Trapasso Memorial Broadcast booth. How you feeling tonight, buddy? We kind of tapped you in an emergency situation. I'm doing pretty good. Um, happy to be here. Um, I think Matt... Double the, uh, if he asked me. Ah, uh, there's Matt. He's back. Well, we're halfway there. Well, I mean, I've heard that about you. Hey, what can I say? Uh, your reputation precedes you. Of course, I was just mentioning to Alan, uh, Matt, that, of course, as soon as we dumped a commercial... Uh, this last time, of course, our only our only our second commercial break of the evening just happens to be when they go green flag. That's 
you know, unfortunately, about how this race has gone. Right, Dave? Yeah, well, that's fair. I mean, we don't do that on purpose. I mean, we try to stick with it as best we can. And when we do cut to a commercial break, sometimes that's just how things, uh, the cards fall. We don't have any control over that. But well, we do make every... We do. If you ask the fine folks in race chat, we do. Just keep it green and we'll stay right here at Martinsville Speedway working lap 286 and 400, the first two stages in the books. Patrick Getter has been dominant so far tonight. He qualified on the pole. He leads this piece with Matt DeCiani in hot pursuit pair of teammates. And that's got to feel pretty good if you're Patrick Gitter. Yeah, absolutely. And if Patrick Gitter is getting it done just about anywhere, in any track we show up at, the intermediates, the short tracks, the road courses, he is always in the conversation, you know, fighting for the win in the Stacey Strong Cup Series. And it, it all goes back to poise and, and just having that level-headed mentality. Like last we talked to him, you know, during the height of the calamity out there on the racetrack, you heard a very calm, cool, and collected Patrick Gitter. And uh, that is what it takes, you know, to be the, uh, the, the ice man, if you will, of the series. He is just always there as uh, one of the front runners in tremendous talent here on display tonight. Speaking of tremendous talent on display, Neil Pearson in the 58. I'll tell you what, he has now worked his way up from fifth into fourth. You know, it's been a long night for Pearson. We've called his number several times. Sean Rogers now all over the rear bumper. The car is finally going single file as we drop back through the field. The only real contested spot right now here is between Ryan, uh, Ryan Samuelson and Kavaja Holt, and that has to go on hold for the time being as it looks like we've got yet another caution. It must be our fault up here in the booth. My goodness. Yep, as we're pulling the strings, we're the master of puppets, per se, up here. And here you thought it was the godfather. Well, I, I do have a godfather. That's uh, Thursday night's uh, Demon Truck Series. Uh, I do have a godfather. His name is Chris Papa, 1-3 Speed Driver. Uh, pretty good uh, talent behind the wheel, but uh, <laughs> of course I had to say that since you mentioned the godfather. Come on. That is true. I'm looking to see what might have happened here as we go to the uh, the blimp view from a high above the racetrack. And I don't see what brought this out. We're going to try one more time here. As we're just, I think we're going to look here at the turn four exit and see who stepped out of line. Ah, there it is. That was the 88. I don't even know how. All of a sudden, I've developed eagle eye, apparently. And somehow I could see that. Are you playing Bond on NES 64? Yes. Goldeneye. Whoa. Goldeneye, that's it. Oh 007. My. All right, so just behind where we were here with Samuelson and Kavaja Holt, Seba gives the 88 a nudge and sends the 88 to Dairy Queen. <laughs> Clearly, Seba's had enough. Well, you know what? I, listen, I spent a long time racing along with Seba, and first of all, incredibly talented driver, and, you know, I want to say that from the rip. The other thing I want to say is also a driver that is not in the mood to put up with any BS. If it's going to happen around him, you're going to pay for it, and that's all there is to it. And we're going to see if we can get a hold of uh, Nolan Hodgson right now. <clears throat> Dave, I think I found the problem. Okay. Uh, I'm going to have to run my own cameras moving forward here because it seems to be a SDK connection problem when I try to sync with you. Ah. That's when I get sent to the cutaway car. I know what it is. Hold on. I'll, I'll fix that in a moment. Hold on. 10-4. As we're going to get a hold of Nolan Hodgson. Hey, Nolan, it's Matt and Dave up in the booth. You got us? Nolan, Matt and Dave up in the broadcast booth. You got us, bud. Yes, I got you. Well, hey, man, talk to me about the car out there on the racetrack tonight. You got yourself in that seventh place position. You seem to be getting better as we continue to wear on into this race. Do you have what it takes to close this one out at the point? I mean, shoot, I'd be happy to finish this thing the way it's been going for me. I mean, I'd, uh, at one point in this race, I had 
six and a half minutes of damage that I was able to fix and finally made my way through the field here. So I think honestly, I'm I'm gonna just look for some points and we'll see how it goes from there. Yeah, well said. You stole the words out of my mouth. You answered the question. So I'll let you get back here to competition. I uh, hope you have good luck the rest of the way. And there he is, ladies and gentlemen, defying the odds here at Martinsville as he's made all the repairs to his car, kept it on the lead lap in that seventh place position. That dark horse Mustang is looking for more as we get ready to go back green, Dave. Absolutely. And I just, I have to ask because I just, <clears throat> I didn't get a chance. Oh, we're going to have to wait as uh, Nolan, you're just going to have to hang on with us here as uh of course, I, I need to get you back up into your uh, race chat, so bear with us here as trying to navigate around here as we get you back up to the four-wide motorsports stable. Three wide in front of them. They think better of it. They get it sorted. Two. <laughs> Copy that. 10-4. Thank you, sir. As we work lap number 298 of 400, here I am trying to fix problems, talk to drivers. All of a sudden, I feel like a dancing bear spinning plates at the circus. Actually, you can't even see a dancing bear at the circus anymore. They're not allowed to have animals. Which, you know, why can't I just see a tiger jumping through a ring of fire? To be completely honest, folks, I don't like going to the circus. It's really a, it's an anxiety thing for me. However, just saying... They should at least have animals there. As we take a look here, speaking of animals, the 58 of Neil Pearson dogging through this lap alongside Nolan Hodgson, who we just spoke with, here on lap 300. So we've got 100 to go now as we work this piece. Finally starting to click off some laps here as we're reaching 10 o'clock Eastern time. Kavaja Holt, Holt losing the rear end but keeps it moving forward. Oh my, somehow he's able to keep that forward as Siba Cornez is there to pounce on him like a lion in the desert. My goodness, Ow. Matt, I can't believe it. I, I don't know how he kept that car going straight. What just what a heads up, you know, heads up uh, being attentive to the situation and doing whatever he had to do to keep that car on the racing surface. I'm still shocked he was able to pull it off. But uh, here he is, continuing to charge forward, as you said, continuing to put pressure on other drivers here in competition as I am currently putting in that updated cam file so I have limited visibility at the moment, Dave. Yeah, Matt Long right now racing in fifth position. The top five go Gitter, DeCiani, Banks, Rogers, and Long. As we see Sean Rogers here, of course, as he, as he told us earlier, he's nursing that 24x so he doesn't want to have any kind of uh, incident out here on the racetrack as he's now getting dangerously close to the rear end of dylan banks in the 70. we can start to see here from atop the bleachers kind of up toward that uh, spotter stand where rogers is getting a good run here he probably wants to keep it right about there so that maybe on the last lap he can get that run right to the rear end of dylan banks as you know, these drivers, we haven't really talked about pitch strategy tonight. All last came down on 282, so they've only got about 24 laps on these tires. Of course, half of those are probably caution laps. As, uh, you know, some of the battles here on the racetrack are heating up as we go through this race. 307 laps in the books. Yep, 307 laps in the books, and Rogers continues to march and charge towards the front up to fourth putting pressure on banks as dave just indicated however now he is working just inches off the back of that zl1 camaro dialing up the excitometer trying to put the pressure on inside the cockpit like the intimidator of old get that driver to make a mistake in the mirror drive miss the corner open up that line and if so look for rogers to pounce yeah, Rogers ready to pounce all over Dylan Banks as we take a look further back here. John Wilco getting ready to give the business to Brian Tarnowski as Tarnowski here in the number 28, Trisha's Hope Chevrolet Camaro, holding Wilco off, each of them up by double digits right now. 15 positions for Tarnowski, 19 
for Wilco. Our biggest mover of the night so far, though, is Chris Davis in the 74. He's up 25 positions after starting in 34th and has quietly worked his way up here in the beast mode Toyota Camry. And I'll tell you what, that's how you know that somebody has a real disciplined approach to the racetrack when you don't realize how far they've come up to get where they are now. Yeah, this guy started in the next county. I mean, in the in the off in the woods, if you ask me. And yet here he is, in spite of all the chaos, just the utter unearthly things we have witnessed here tonight. And lo and behold, Chris Davis here in that ninth place position. How does he? Some of these guys, it's just incredible what they're able to do. You know, in spite of having all the odds stacked against him, is he is getting the, some pressure now from the 81 of Samuelson. But still, nonetheless, inside the top 10, that's a heck of a drive for that driver from Beast Mode Performance. Ron Fitting now just behind Chad Sander in the 94. As Fitting is trying to hold off the lapped car, the 84 of Noah Hamilton starting to close in on another lap car, Chris Custer out of Ohio. And I'll tell you what, again, Ron Fitting, kind of where I was last year in this exact race here at Martinsville, just, you know, waiting his time out trying to stay out of trouble in fact last year i know that i had you know my teammates there in the uh in the joe gibbs racing stable kind of being like hey listen just calm down get through this you'll be fine you'll be fine and sure enough you know you finish 18th of course i was 82 laps down which is just about where we are right now as patrick gitter leads the way he's getting ready to start putting more drivers down as he sees eric papano ahead of him as papano already down two positions chad Sanner. In the 94, that mobile machine, he's going to be the next one to go a lap down once Gitter gets there. And Gitter is getting there. As you can see, just how much quicker Gitter is right now to this traffic that he's working through. is It almost seemed like it didn't take any effort whatsoever. Is now uh, that 84 machine going to take it down pit road. Next in line, though, is Gitter continues to knock cars off the lead lap like flies off the wall. Yeah, finally getting some really good racing here as we're starting to string those green flag laps together. Gitter, DeCiani, and Banks, one, two, three, they go. You can throw a blanket over them for the time being. Look at those rear tires on the 70 of Banks. Glowing like a Christmas tree as he's got to, you know, be able to keep control of that car and rotate through the center. It, you know, that kind, of, that kind of skill is incredible, and it's something that I, I wish I would have had back in the day. Because he's able to heat those, you know, heat those brake drums up, and still manage to to not lock the rears up. Well, you know, this next gen car, you know, it's, we talk about improvements. You know, just the expansion and the size of the rotors, the brake calipers uh, alone are huge improvements over its predecessors in the past. You know, then we're going to carbon ceramic uh, brake or, or excuse me rotors as well. They can take a punishment. You can put them through an inferno, and they are not going to fail, unlike the car of old. You know, those steel brake rotors, um, even all the ducting, all the air cooling, you still had to manage the brake temps. These cars here, you can pretty much send it, and as you uh, alluded to, blowing like a hot cherry or tamale, as you can see that color just radiating from the back of the rotor. Kavaja Holt registering has crashed as we go under our 27th caution of the evening. We're going to see what happened with Kavaja. Perhaps, as it looks like he's not really near anybody, we're going to see exactly what we were just talking about. There it is, as the rear just steps out and alongside of him. Fortunately, the Trisha's Hope double zero Ford Mustang is able to, he is just inching back. Oh, well, he didn't really, he didn't really want to do that. <laughs> Well, he did a great job there getting it blowed up and not making any contact initially. And then as the, uh, John forced it there on uh, on takeoff, ended up catching a piece there of the safer barrier. It's that pace car out in front of the field once again. Matt DeCiani, Matt and Dave up in the booth. You got us, bud. Yeah, I got you guys. Well, Matt, here we are again. You're in second place. You're chasing the 21. Do you have what it takes tonight to turn the tides and go up there and get yourself a dub? Uh, maybe. Um, 
That depends. If we can get some green, if we can go green, it'd be interesting. But I mean, we're on identical sets, so it's and track position is everything here. So I don't know. I'm not going to do anything egregious. So, but you, yeah. know, you you mentioned their green flag runs. You guys really haven't had much of that tonight. So this is probably the first time you're really getting an understanding of how your car is going to perform over the long run. Are you satisfied with that at this from this point? Yeah, so far so good. Um, yeah, we'll see. The track time's coming down, so it might change the handling a little bit. But uh, yeah, overall pretty heavy. Well, nonetheless, it's been a great showing here for you once again tonight in the Stacy Strong Cup Series. We'll cut you loose as you get ready to go back to green. Hopefully we talk to you on the other side of this thing in victory lane. All right, sounds good. Thanks, guys. As we're going to send him back up into the TCSP E10 Esports Stable. Matt, thank you for doing that interview for us. As always, I, you know, one of the interesting things when you talk about teammates being side by side is, you know, chances are, yeah, you are on the same setup. You've been exchanging notes this entire time. So all of a sudden, it kind of turns into a fixed uh, setup race to some degree as you get into the twilight here, especially when now you're finally able to test out that long run. Well, you know, I argue, and I say yes and no, and here's why. In real life, I mean, I don't care if you're Hendrick, Childress Racing, you know, no two drivers are going to like the same setup. What's fast for one is not necessarily going to translate to what that other driver wants. And yes, they're in the same stable. They do have a similar setup. I guarantee you they, there are differences between Gitter and DeCiani's cars out there on the racetrack. Uh, you know, but, you know, as you mentioned, the fixed setup, I can see your point and where you're coming from. It's just going to really depend on, you know, who does the better job of managing their tires and who, you know, understands when to go and when to, uh, and when to, necessarily not force the issue are you saying you sometimes need to know when to hold them hold them and yes per perhaps know when to fold them know when to walk away know when to run ah there it is did you ever see the the uh, duet between uh kenny rogers and um oh my god lionel richie that sounds like a uh, never mind uh, do I your, have not. Do yourself a favor. Look it up on YouTube. It is entertaining. I'll be honest. This sounds like an instant migraine. Close. As uh, Sean Rogers now, whoa, makes contact with the 70. <laughs> Someone's too it. wide, and I'm guessing it has something to do with Ron Fitting. Perhaps back here deeper in the field. And here it is with Ron Fitting. As, yep, there it is. The 58 trying to get in there and just oh, pinballs himself just... Oh, all over the racetrack. That's a mess if I ever saw one myself. Yeah, they were ricocheting all over each other there as we try three wide once again. And I get it. It looks cool. If you're able to pull it off, even better. But uh, it's very fitting, isn't it? We now have our very own Ron Fitting here. Hey, Ron, it's Dave and Matt. You got us. Yeah, how are you doing? Uh, I'm good, but listen, I, I, it turns out that maybe three wide doesn't work out at Martinsville? Yeah, I I don't know what was going on, what they were thinking. I, I stayed up top. I wasn't fighting to get low. I knew they were faster, and um, I was just minding my own business, riding the outside, and next thing you know, you've seen it happen. Three race cars go round the outside, round the outside, and it does not go well when you hit the wall. No, not at all, man. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> I mean, Have you done that before, Dave? Uh, no, I've, I've not. That was right off the top of the old noggin here. And, you know, Ron, listen, you know, here we are, 70 to go. What's going to be your mindset is, I mean, you sit back here in 17th position, you know, still here on the lead lap which i mean that's not a bad thing when you consider how how long and, and how deep we are into this race yeah to tell you the truth all i've been doing is just uh driving around trying not to run in the back of anyone and uh just making around the corners and making it out of the corner and just take my time i've done a, a few officials and i i just know you, you stay out of trouble and you usually get shuffled up to the front but um martinsville is just not my uh it's not my cup of tea 
let alone 400 laps of this. I mean, this, this race is um, dragging on. There's a lot of uh, way too many cautions. Um, it's just, it's really um, mentally taxing. Mentally taxing it is, but, it, you know, we're still five shy of last year's uh, 33 total cautions in this race. So there is still hope with now 68 to go. It, you know, what's going to be, are, are you going to stick with the same strategy and just kind of drive to survive? Yeah, that's uh, that's all I'm doing. I'm just trying to survive this thing, man. All right, my friend. Well, listen, good luck the rest of the way. Congrats for uh, running where you are now and staying alive this long. And, hey, you never know. Stranger things have happened. You may still wind up deeper up here, you know, closer to the top ten. Yeah, I'm hoping. All right, buddy. As we're going to send Ron Fitting back up into the Grease Monkey Motorsports chat. want to thank him for his time. Of course, we also want to check in with our... Uh, with our youtube.com live chat amelia the rat retracted their message so i don't know what that said yes i should have been paying closer attention yeah, see now uh, you know i just listened to that earlier today and it just seemed very apropos matt hey if you pulled that in real time fired from the hit that was beautiful <clears throat> Yeah, it, it wasn't on my, my hot sheet to read off of, that's for sure. Uh, you know, speaking of other things from that particular era in time, there I am watching the news this afternoon, just doing a little check-in and see what's going on in the world. And Tony Hawk was selling cholesterol medicine. <laughs> I happen to catch that commercial, too. It kind of makes you stop and think that we might be getting old just a little bit. Just a just a flipping hair. Oh, tar, uh, Samuelson goes around. Let's see what caution number twenty nine was brought out by. As we're just going to take one quick look at this. Samuelson in the eighty one on the outside here, going up against Cornez, and there it goes again, Dave. You know, I want us to look and see just how close he might have been to that scene because. Something tells me is we're going to drop right here to the blimp cam. The silent killer. Uh, yeah, and we're going to go down a quarter speed. We see those right wheels come across the seam, but there's a seam right there in the middle of the ass of the uh, concrete. I almost said asphalt. <laughs> and that's what made him slip slide and get to where he is now. So, you know, those seams that we talked about earlier on here in the race are now starting to play a factor in, in getting some of these cars loose and spinning around. Yeah, and I, I think that could have been the uh, a factor earlier as well in some of these uh, incidences that almost happened uh, at the same spot of the racetrack on entry. You know, when you're getting on the brake, trying to rotate, and the back, the back end of the car just takes off like that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But uh, getting back to it, it, like I said, I feel like it now makes us men of a certain age when all of a sudden the guy who they who the, the, the skateboard video game franchise is named for is now worried about my blood pressure and my triglycerides. Well, you know, part of that is also, hey, you know, it's marketing and there that's money, that's income as well. But uh, still, you don't see him out there on a skateboard doing PlayStation 2 covers anymore. It uh, it makes you sit back and think just a little bit. They, they're using him because he they know that he will connect with our generation. Exactly. And that's what terrifies me. It's kind of like, you know, I look, I look now and, and every now and then you see that uh, Medicare commercial with Joe Namath. And you know that there's a lot of baby boomers who are, you know, the tail end of the baby boomers who were, oh, you know, Broadway Joe. And they are right. able to connect with him. It's... The day that Troy Aikman sells me Medicare is the day that I just hang hang it up. That's it. You know, I'm on the tail end of that because I was in early grade school when uh, he was in his prime and destroying my Buffalo Bills and back-to-back -back Super Bowls. But uh, I know what you mean, and that's uh, not far off in the distant future. Yeah, you're welcome for the Four Falls of Buffalo. By the way, a great 30 for 30 by ESPN. It was a great 30 for 30. As now, let's go out on that iRacing.com pace car. Getter, DeCiani, they share the front row. You got Sean Rockin' Rogers in third place on that inside of row two. 
And then you got the banks in that 70 machine. You know, you say Sean Rockin' Rogers, but I don't think anybody knows here who Rockin' Robin is. I know who Rockin' Robin is. Tweedly diddly dee. But uh, that's not necessarily where I was going. <laughs> that, the best part that, is they don't know what I'm doing when I shut my microphone off. Oh, I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best. As Sean oh. Rogers here holding oh, himself he, on the low side just underneath Dylan Banks. Things are starting to heat up between these two drivers. Too much contact could send Rogers into Dairy Queen land. That's not what we want to see as he's got a rear bumper full of Nolan Hodgson now. As we've got to get a chance, you know, I forgot to ask during the Nolan Hodgson interview what the deal with Rick Hendrick was, is, or could be, as right now Matt Long over top of Nolan, as the two of them are trying to assail Sean Rogers here in this battle for fifth position going just behind, behind him. Meanwhile, Kavaja Holt not deterred whatsoever by that spin out earlier as he is just over top of Ron Fitting now. Is Fitting right up against that left rear tire going down the back chute now has basically it's Fitting, Holt, and Samuelson all vying for that 15th position. And Chris Claude, he's just out here logging laps. He and Brian Tarnowski each up 16 and 18 positions. And these two drivers are just fine where they're at. Meanwhile, back at the Fortress of Solitude, Patrick Gitter just laid down an 1891. We just broke into the 18 second bracket. Are you, (laughs) that is blistering, full blown afterburner around this uh, paperclip. And he's keeping his grip, letting it rip as he can take it back down to side by side action. Right around Ryan Samuelson in that 16th place position, side by side. As we zoom in on the coverage here, Chevy on Camaro action. Samuelson has been able to make this outside group or that higher lane work that Dave said did not exist and laughed at me. Start of the broadcast, just want to remind everybody is now Chris Claude getting in on the action, going up against Kavaja Holt. This for that 14th and 15th place position. And Ryan Samuelson closing in on this battle as his two cars are side by side. They're not going to be able to run optimum lap times, and that lets the competition come to you. And here is Samuelson now making a move on the 10 of Claude. Chris Claude running the high side now as he does stay away from that seam that's caused so much havoc here on the racetrack. You know, and to be fair, it's been a long time since we started this broadcast. In fact, uh, the race itself has been going on for 2 hours, 47 minutes, and 48 seconds as of this moment. So, you know, if you do remember a a random word that I said earlier, good for you because I sure as heck didn't until you said it that I realized, oh, yeah, I said that earlier. (laughs) Chris Claude now separated from Brian Tarnowski as Tarnowski up here all by his lonesome. He's got a rearview mirror full of Kavaja, Holt, and Ryan Samuelson who are chasing each other down. What Chris Claude just got sent up into the into the outside wall there. I'm going to run this back because I'll tell you what, folks. This bears this bears at least a little bit of uh, of a replay. The uh, corner? I'm getting. I don't know if he missed the corner as much as perhaps he uh, he just got over tight. Maybe he locked up that front right tire. A very rare single car mistake. By Chris Claude, you just you don't see him do that. No, uh, you know Chris is a is this is almost a great track for Chris because he is an absolute rhythm driver. Once he's in his groove, he will run the tires off of that thing as he as he you know drains the fuel tank dry. Fifty laps to go now here at Martinsville Speedway. Hopefully by now everybody's settling back into their seats after getting one of the famous Martinsville hot dogs. And uh, maybe winding the old grandfather clock as it's getting later here on a Sunday night. Move those yeah, weights that, up in the chamber. You know, that grandfather clock, it is, you know, that is an old school clock. That thing is several hundred pounds made out of real wood and probably one of the more fire trophies uh, here in the series. You know, at least that's what a lot of drivers have to say as we go on board now or bring coverage to the 18 of Bobby Anderson. Just outside the top five here in that sixth place position. Let's go on board. You can see, check it out. Look, or I should say, looking out the nose of that dark horse Ford Mustang. You can see Nolan Hodson 
about three and a half car lengths ahead, and he closes that gap down on entry. But Hodson does a good job rotating the center and getting off the corner. And just as I say that, Bobby Anderson does it better. He is there now primed on the back of that 12 machine as he is working. What do you think, Dave? Go to the high side here, and he does. And he does. And, you know, here's the thing. He tried the low side. He couldn't get around. Now he tries the high side. The problem is is that, he, that, that Nolan just gets a great jump on exit. Now... Maybe Anderson, yeah, Anderson thought he could get him, but he's he's using the racetrack in kind of a reverse fashion here as we work lap number 356, and we can see that distance between Anderson and Hodgson, and it's just not go time yet, but he, whoa, of course, as I say that, all of a sudden they go side by side here through three wow. and four out of the Geico restart zone onto the front stretch, making me look like a guy who has no idea what racing looks like. They do this to us constantly, and you can tell how hard he had to get on the brakes. It looked like molten lava, you know, on the rotors of that 18 machine as he went through the corner. Still side by side. They still don't have it sorted. They're going to drag race one more time. Look at that glow off of the rotors on that 18 day. And now we can see the as the rotors are glowing that he's able to secure away fifth position from Nolan Hodgson. He gets on the brakes a little lighter that time around as we work lap 359 all of a sudden. And don't look now, folks, but we're getting toward the end of this race. We are. We are coming out the other side of the black hole tonight. There's Hodgson just trying to get back by the 18. Doesn't seem to have enough forward bite in that dark horse right now. Maybe he can make an adjustment uh, you know, with that brake bias, find something to help that car rotate just a little bit better. Because now you see Matt Long in the 97. He's going to be the next contender for that sixth place position, or excuse me, fifth place position. I mean, Hodgson last came down on 282. He worked 361 here. 40 to go now as Alex Princeton in 12th, uh, in 12th position came down on 323. And all of a sudden, Princeton starting to make some moves here as he's crawling up closer and closer to uh, Siba Cornez. We're going to take a look here at the uh, lap time between Cornez and Brinson. I mean, there's a lot of green here on the timing line, but and 360 was about the slowest that he's ran so far for Brinson as he's closing in on the rear bumper of Siba Cornez. Yeah, Alex Princeton is one of the long run boys in this league. If you get a green flag run, he is excellent at managing his tires and will always uh, come to the front of these races, especially when that tire is a factor. No surprise now that Princeton is substantially quicker at times than Siva Cornez. Last time by Alex Princeton was a 1970 to uh, Siva Cornez was a 1985. And now all of a sudden, Princeton seemed, of course, just as soon as we start really watching this battle break out, Princeton starting to fall off ever so slightly as Kavaja Holt now looks to try to get where Princeton is. And now we're going to take a look at this one. Kavaja all green here on the lap time, Delvin. Yeah, it just it happened to you moments ago, and same thing happens to me, Dave. It's almost like they're listening to the broadcast and they're doing it deliberately, but we know that's not the case. That's just the ebb and flow of racing. As this battle continues here now between the double zero and the 19 of Princeton, this is the tightest battle we have on the racetrack right now. This for that 12th place position. So we're going to keep it focused right here. No change on at the front of this thing. Patrick Gitter continues to still lead by over half a second on Matt DeCiani. Look at Siva Cordes. He's throwing his hat in the ring as he dive bombs it in there. Now you got Siva on a hold action. This is going to allow Princeton to possibly get away a little bit, and it does, but they get back single file, which should then turn the advantage back to the double zero as he has been quicker the last five to ten laps. Yeah, Patrick Gitter now starting to gap the rest of the field. Let's take a look here at DeCiani. DeCiani and Gitter trying to match one another time-wise. And as we had talked about earlier, 
those setups just about the same. So we're going to start to see some of this even itself out, so to speak. Ryan Samuelson now looks to the inside of the 93 of Tane Hodison, looking to throw the hairnet on and serve lunch to Hodison as they work themselves around, turn, around turns three and four here on lap number 370. This is what we've been looking for all night long. This is the kind of racing that we wanted to see. You know, this is what the people are here for as Samuelson now gets around Hodison ever so slightly and secures away ninth position. Yep, that's a great point. And this is the type of racing that we've come to love and expect out of the Stacey Strong Cup Series. I'm so glad we're getting a taste and a piece of this now here late in this one. Is Ryan Samuelson starting to come to life here? That Camaro coming into its own the longer we run as he starts to pull away from Tane Hodison. However, he's got a little bit of ground to make up as Chris Davis is almost two seconds up the road for that eighth place position. One-on-one -on -one battle starting to break out all around the racetrack as Kavaja Holt and Alex Princeton still going at it. Sean Rogers kind of in a good spot right now for himself running in fifth position. He'd like to get on that podium, but, you know, we've talked about the incident points tonight. Drivers getting sent off to, to be disqualified due to incident points. Maybe he just kind of settles for this here. You know what? There's nothing wrong with settling. A fifth place finish is still a top five. It's still an excellent points day. You don't want to throw that all away like I've done several times, you know, and wind up 22nd because you tried to get, you know, one or two extra positions that weren't really there for the taking. And uh, I, I would not expect Sean Rogers to put himself in a situation to get one more position on the racetrack if he's going to jeopardize a top five or top ten finish. It's just not in his matrix or DNA. As you see how low he is trying to work on the racetrack, picking the shortest way around this place. However, that Coca-Cola machine uh, just cannot replicate that same line as he was just about off the racing surface there. Yeah, you know, a lot the of these drivers line. are going to start, you know, especially those that can, oh, of course, as soon as I start to look away, uh, Rogers having to work around the 17 of Eric Pac uh, Papano. You know, now that these drivers can see what they're working with, with, you know, now less than 25 to go, they're able to maybe use that car, you know, start to nudge their way around the racetrack, shall we say. You know, I know that we went through that long period here in the middle between stages one and two where, you know, we were getting more cautions and, and caution laps than we were green flag laps. But all of a sudden, this race has come to life with 22 to go. Yep, it's, it, it got here. It just took a little bit longer than we anticipated. And the other part of that is not as congested. These, you know, there's some breathing room. You know, if they get out of shape, make some contact, they have, you know, they have runoff now where they can save it versus colliding with another race car out there on the racetrack. And I think that's also a big part of the reason why we're starting to see the uh, intensity and the action picking up as well is now working lap 378, or excuse me, 379. Chad Sander yep. trying to get, track down Brian Tarnowski out here as if uh, Tarnowski might owe him a little bit of lunch money as uh, this battle for 16th now starting to heat up. Some of these drivers that have been saving their equipment are now, you know, as I had just mentioned, able to finally use that equipment. Chris Claude running in 15th position. A year ago in this race, Chris Claude did pretty darn well, if I remember correctly. And, of course, now I, I lost the darn thing. So I'm going to have to go back to that because I'll tell you what, that's one of the coolest things about the software that we use here for iRacing. We can look back, you know, historically at these races and, and see, you know, what might have happened or, or what could happen as we get around, you know, some of these racetracks through the schedule. Well, I can tell you this. What a drive by Brian Tarnowski tonight. I mean, this man was used and abused. He was he was the uh, the redheaded stepchild in this race. It seemed like he was getting caught up in everyone else's mess. That car was just beaten and uh, butchered to a T. But yet here he is, up 15 spots, just outside the top 15. And I think he just might be able to get there as Chris Claude is now being reeled in by that faster Camaro in that 16th place position, Dave. A year ago, Chris Claude finished in 14th after starting 24th in this race. You know, again, 
part of the beauty to the SNN family. Ooh, now all of a sudden Tarnowski getting tight. You know, the beauty to some of the racing that we see here on SNN is many of these drivers have been here for a long time. As uh, now Tarnowski, all kinds of tight, now hits the wall <laughs> behind Chris Claude. But Chris Claude, like I said, a year ago finished 14th. He looks to finish about there tonight as he's 6 point, uh, 6.1 seconds behind John Wilco. So it might be for Chris Claude, Roger Wilco out as uh, he might not be able to get up there to 14th. But Mr. Consistency, he is right there, you know, within a position or two of last year's performance. And, again, you touched on it earlier. I did as well. You know, that's that's his strength. He's he's a great game manager. He knows how to make the most out of a, uh, a dismal situation or especially overcome adversity earlier on in a race and famous for still putting it in the top ten or just outside. Is John Wilco now up 22 spots in that 14th place position. You know, one of the other guys that, you know, seems to always make the way uh, through the field as we get down to the end of these things. Yes, sir, as we take a look back up here further into the field, Chris Claude now down a lap as Dylan Banks is holding off Bobby Anderson. Bobby Anderson all over the rear bumper here, nearly able to lick the deck lid of Dylan Banks. <laughs> My goodness, it does not get much closer than that. And Anderson and this whole top five, uh, these drivers have managed to somehow keep these cars rotating just perfectly as Anderson looks to go to the inside, tries to set himself up, and Banks already sniffed that one out. And now Banks gets loose coming out of turn number four. That opens the door for Anderson to look here to the high side. As long as Anderson stays away from the seam, he's going to keep that grip. And now he peeks to the inside again. They're going to drag race down the back chute. Drag race on the back shoot is Anderson now backs off. He's going to pull in line, take a peek here off the corner, but the 70 of Banks is going to respond and mirror the performance as he's going to send it down hard on the inside. Now that's going to force the 18 up the hill as he's trying to, looks like trying to cross him over there on the exit of the corner. And here we go as Dave, he's going to send it. Look for those rotors to start glowing. And they are as he gets a crank, catches a piece of the curbing, though, and that's going to kill his momentum off the corner. He's going to have to reset as he gets ready to attack Banks once again for that third-place position. Yeah, if he doesn't catch that curb, he completes the pass on Dylan Banks for third place on the podium. As 100%. now he's drawing back in. Now he's only got nine laps to do it. And nine laps, you know, usually, or eight laps as we cross the line. Eight laps, as we look at some other tracks, is plenty of time. But at a place like Martinsville, where you're only running 19.82 uh, second laps, that's a second slower from Patrick Gitter's uh, fastest lap. You know, you're looking at these cars now going, oh, my, do I, ha do I really have enough time? Seven laps is really only, you know, two and a half minutes. Two and a half minutes, right. But you can't. You can't take your shot here prematurely. You have to wait for that right time as caution comes back out on the racetrack. This, this is going to make it very interesting, Dave. Yeah, Ron Fitting being involved in bringing this caution out. We'll take a quick peek here at the replay as we're here with six laps to go on lap 395. Here's Fitting coming into turn three and four, and as he rolls it out, here comes the rear end. And just in front of Chris Custer manages to bring it back together, but too much, too much facing the wrong direction brings the caution out on I racing. Now the question suddenly becomes: Do you come down and try to grab some grippers, or do you stay out here with what you got? Now that the now that basically everybody is going to be bunched up again. Well, I can guarantee you this: what everyone is probably going to do exactly the opposite of what Gitter does. Not sure if that's his, if that holds true for his teammate, but I mean, typically, at least I can remember all these races at Martinsville with Jeff Gordon's up front, Daryl Waltrip, a late caution like this. Whatever the leader did, everyone else does the opposite. So if Gitter comes down and takes tires, everyone else is going to stay out and just pin him back behind everyone on the lead lap. If he does stay out. Everyone's going to come down and put four fresh Dr. Feelgoods on that race car to help equalize the performance offset that Par or that Patrick Gitter has had all night tonight. Well, and at this point now with Patrick Gitter and Matt DeCiani 
being up here on the front row to restart. Dylan Banks is really going. Dylan Banks and Bobby Anderson are really going to have to pin their ears back and go at them like a couple of rabid dogs to try to get up here and, and improve where they're going to finish tonight. And remember, if you deploy the chrome horn first, make sure you don't give him enough time to retaliate because usually it doesn't end up well for you. No, and as we come back here into uh, turns three and four, we're going to see the iRacing.com pace car lights turn out. We're going to have a natural green-white checker when we go back green flag racing. And, uh, you know, oh, nope, never mind. We're going to go to NASCAR overtime. 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 And I'll tell you what, Matt, why don't you explain to the fans, because I, I, I know that we've done this enough, but I think you, uh, you explain this so much better than I do. Well, I appreciate that, and that's normally when I'm on a full sleep cycle, but we'll go ahead and give it a shot. So we're going into NASCAR's version of green-white checkered overtime. Here's how it works, folks. We're going to get this field re-racked, re-stacked. We're going to take the green flag. The green flag is going to go into the air. They're going to take off like each and every other time we take a green flag on a restart. If the field successfully makes it back around to that white flag without incident on the racetrack, keyboard is incident, that's going to basically allow us to race back to the checkered flag however if we do not see the leader take that white flag we're going to then re-rack him restack it do it all over again up to three times if the third time we cannot get the race in under uh, racing conditions the moment that that caution flag does wave the final time in that third overtime the field will be frozen and positioning will be dedicated by timing and scoring well said as the iRacing.com pace car peels down pit road. NASCAR overtime engaged. Green Patrick flag back Gitter hits. In the air. Patrick Gitter drops the hammer through the floorboard, and we are back underway with two laps to go. Popsicle sticks are in the air. Gitter trying to hold on to the lead. Dylan Banks all of a sudden gets a great jump over Bobby Anderson. Bobby Anderson has a rearview mirror full of Sean Rogers. Right now, and as he comes off of turn four, the white flag goes in the air. We are racing back to checkers. Oh, and they just had a six-car pile up right at the flag stand, but it's too late. Gitter took the white flag, and we are racing back around into the 3-4 complex for the final time. His teammate, Matt DeCiani, is there, but it's not going to be enough as he charges down the front stretch. He's going to keep his grip at the paperclip as Patrick Gitter gets the good out of that car once again and the field and takes the W here at Virginia, or Martinsville, I'm sorry, Virginia. We're in the state of Virginia. Look, at least you know where we are. Patrick Gitter gets her done one more time here in the SNN uh, Cup Series, of course, brought to you by Stacy Strong and Trisha's Hope. want to thank everybody for, uh, for tuning in and hanging on. We have just a few moments left here as we're going to talk to our, our podium drivers as uh, all of a sudden, Patrick Gitter picks up his third win of the year. He's going to stretch out to that win lead here in our points. That's going to do a lot to help him as we wait to see these drivers drop on down into our, uh, into our waiting room here as we get DeCiani and Gitter. One, two, and Banks. Dylan, Dylan Banks, Banks, if I can find him. I believe first time we're going to get an opportunity to speak with the driver of the 70. Yes, sir. As we're going to work this one, two, three. Patrick Gitter, who is celebrating with a little Polish victory lap and smoke. Hey, Patrick, it's Dave and Matt up in the booth. You got us. 10 4, gotcha. Hey, man, listen, great run tonight. Dominant run from, from the way we could see it here. I mean, take us through this race and, and how do you wind up atop the pile? Man, um, it wasn't easy. I got lucky that um, that stage one, I you know, made some mistakes early in the race, went to the back, um, decided I would just try to cycle to the front after that first stage with pitting early and then staying out when the caution or the um, stage one caution blew. So after that, I was just maintaining track position. Um, really, it seems like it's been the name of the game here this week. Yeah, you know, once you get into a position here, it's almost easier to be defensive rather than offensive. And you manage to do both very well. An incredible run for the 21 team. I mean, you know, you've got a, a teammate just behind you, a Matt DeCiani. 
it's got to be, you know, comforting to know that at least on the restart, you're side by side with somebody who's got basically the same setup. Yeah, definitely. I mean, Matt and I have been teammates for a long time and um, he and I, we race really well together and, um, you know, we do a lot to help each other out and um, <laughs> we certainly won't lay over for one another when it comes to hard racing, but um, I know I can count on Matt to race me clean at the end. Um, so I just appreciate him. He was fast all night. I mean, if he would have been up front in front of me, I think the roles would have been reversed because he had the same speed as I did all night. Yeah, it's always interesting when I'm starting to watch the, the lap delta and I'm thinking, oh my goodness, all they're doing is exchanging, you know, by hundredth of a second as we get deeper into the night. But, you know, a hard fought win here at Martinsville. I mean, it's tough when you go through as many cautions as we had tonight, of course. And uh, I know that that was <clears throat> talk of the town, if you will. But fortunately enough, you know, we finally get here to the checkered flag. So before we cut you loose, who do you need to... Uh, you know, shout out for this run tonight. Yeah. Um, you know, first off Matt for pulling off the one, two tonight. So shout out to him and appreciate his help in the race. Good run for him. Um, team Conti Sim performance. They gave us an awesome set this week. We've good, had really good success with it all week. And we've just, we've always had some, some good success at Martinsville. So shout out to those guys and Michael Conti for, um, equipping us with what we needed to be successful this week. Um, Martin PC, Apex Designs, um, and then Chris for putting on the league, and certainly you guys in the booth. All right, my friend. Well, listen, good luck uh, next week. Of course, we'll see you right here on Sim Racing Media, and congrats on the uh, on the checkered flag tonight. All right, I appreciate it. Thanks, guys. And Matt, I believe that momentarily – as uh, we clear the way here, you should have Matt DeCiani with you. Matt DeCiani, Matt and Dave up in the SRM broadcast booth. You got a copy, bud. Yeah, I got you guys. Well, here we are once again. It's becoming almost a regular affair here in the Tony uh, Memorial broadcast booth. Your teammate won the race. You finish right in his uh, coattails in that, in that P2 position. Another strong performance for you as well. How are you guys so good? at just about every different racetrack that we race at, even when you have a race like tonight where there was a ton of attrition, uh, calamity, just mayhem around every corner, and yet here you are with virtually an unscathed race, virtually an unscathed race car. Yeah, I mean, the preparation every week is phenomenal. There's a handful of us over at TCSP that, you know, we do a lot of setup work, a lot of testing before the week start, so then... Me, Pat, and I know Derek's not here tonight, a few others. We, we just work well together in the race, managing the race, keeping each other level-headed, and especially like tonight where it was pretty unbearable the first half of the race. Uh, just keep each other focused, but yeah, I mean, it works. We work well together, and the results are showing up. You know, you bring up a great point, and I touched on this earlier in the broadcast. You said, you know, tonight and that, that mental factor that comes in, the stress, you know, the emotions. Obviously, you know, the viewers at home necessarily can't see that, but what does that do to a race car driver when you have caution after caution after caution? What types of it, obstacles do you have to overcome when that's uh, happening out there on the racetrack? Well, like a track like Martinsville, now that we're shifting on both ends and breaking points, it's really easy to miss a downshift, you know, wheel off the car in the corner, overdrive a braking zone. So, yeah, it's especially with it being so much rhythm, it's like that just kills it with yellow after yellow after yellow, then restart, and then you got to worry about tire spin. And it's just, yeah, it's a lot. It just escalates from there, and we've seen some explosions out there on the racetrack tonight, but then again, it seemed like yourself and Gitter were just on a, on a different planet as far as the poise, the calm, the calmness, you know, just so chill on the radio, and yet, you know, here you are again. What does this momentum do for you, though? I mean, you have a lot of it rolling. Can you guys carry this right into the playoffs and throughout the rest of the season? Oh, well, the playoffs are a long ways away. A lot can change now with, you know, iRacing updates and stuff like that. But, I mean, that's that's the goal, ultimately. Well, there you go. You're right. Those uh, updates can certainly change things quick, fast, and in a hurry. But it is all performance for Matt DeCiani as once again finds himself in the top three here in the Stacy Strong Cup Series. He's going to come home, P2. Matt, before we cut you loose, who do you want to thank who helps you get it done on Team 14? 
Yeah, thanks to you guys for calling this race. Uh, I know it's probably a long one for you guys. Uh, shout out to Team Conti. Uh, congrats on Pat on the win. And uh, shout out to Dylan. He had a good run tonight, too. Well, there he is, ladies and gentlemen, once again, Matt DeCiani dices through the field, able to ride the weather the storm and comes home with a solid second place finish here at Martinsville. Dave, back to you. Thank you, Matt, as always, for the fire in uh, interview. And last but certainly not least here on the podium tonight, Dylan Banks, driver of the number 70. Hey, Dylan, it's Dave up in the booth. You got me. Yes, sir. How y'all doing? Man, I'm doing good, but Lillington has to be proud of you tonight as you bring home third position after a great, you know, finish last week. You know, last week you add to the top five and top ten list, and, you know, you jump up 11 positions in the point standings. Obviously, the third place finish tonight going to do even more for you. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. It's, uh, God, that was, uh, that was long. I was ready to get that over with. That was pretty rough. I'm just happy to, happy to race with DGR and happy to get that uh top three finish um after that gruesome long race but uh yeah it was a lot of fun at the end uh not at the beginning at the end um but yeah i'm uh happy that i finally got i fin finally got a top three and i look forward to racing the rest of the year yeah i mean you know the deeper that you get into the season i mean you know and i just looked i mean we have until september before the playoffs start here so you know plenty of time before you hit that round of 16 so obviously this is definitely going to move you in the right direction for that. What are you thinking about as we get ready to go to Texas next week? Of course, we finally get to stretch things out distance wise and go back to a mile and a half or. Well, I'm thinking about um, staying consistent. Um, honestly, uh, the, the consistency is key to me because um, you go in there and win one race. Hey, you win one race, but you go out there and the next couple of races, you have bad races. Um, it, it just hurts you. Um, and especially in points. Um, so the key for me is consistency. Um, I know I can run up front um, with these guys. I just, it's just staying out of trouble. Um, but, yeah. Um, and I also want to say um, congrats to Patrick on the dub. Um, he deserved that. Him and Matt were fun to race with, and all the guys up at the front were re really good to race with. Um, but, yeah, consistency is key to me. Yeah, consistency is definitely the way to get around this piece. I mean, you know, when when you get into a short track, it literally every short track is a rhythm track, and you know you absolutely killed the rhythm tonight for sure, and uh, you know that's what success is born out of, you know being able to maintain where you're at, where you're going, and where you've been. So good for you, man, and of course you know getting to add on to that as we get ready to go to Texas Motor Speedway next week. Before we cut you loose, who do you need to thank and tip tip your helmet to? Um, I want to thank um. DGR for uh, allowing me to race with them uh, for the past little bit. Um, and I also want to thank EPI for giving me these ripper sets every week. Um, shout out to them. Uh, Donovan Strauss, uh, he's the man. Um, but yeah, um, shout out to DGR. They're the reason why I'm here. All right, buddy. Well, listen, congrats once again, and we will see you next week. Sounds good, man. Y'all have a great night. And a great night we did have, Matt. And a great night we did have here in the Tony Trapas Memorial Broadcast booth, Matt. Absolutely was the action one of the best times throughout the course of the Let's keep that microphone plugged in for just a few moments more. It is plugged in. Oh. Well, there you go. There now I can hear you. Sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. Let me start that over again. And that it was, Dave. We had a little bit of everything here at Martinsville tonight. Certainly, we did not expect that assault of cautions. And we saw what would happen as uh, society began to break down on the racetrack, as tempers boiled over, as it almost turned into an inferno. Then they get it right. And we see the typical textbook SNN side-by-side -side high octane racing that we're accustomed to. And it got good quick, fast, and in a hurry. As Patrick Gitter and Matt DeCiani became the clear favorites, stars of the field tonight. Team 1-2 finish with Dylan Banks breaking through, getting his first top three finish of the season. After all, I would say it's a big success here for Martinsville. 
Yes, sir. And taking one final look at our at our race results before we get out of here at Martinsville, Patrick Gitter brings home the checkered flag. He's joined on the podium by Matt DeCiani and Dylan Banks. Bobby Anderson comes home in third position, while Sean Rogers, or I'm sorry, fourth position, <clears throat> while Sean Rogers rounds out the top five. Nolan Hodgson and Ryan Samuelson finish sixth and seventh with Alex Prince and John Wilco and Tane Hodison making up your top ten. Brian Tarnowski brings home 11th position honors while Kavaja Holt fights the double zero all the way up into 12th after he had qualified in 11th. Matt Long finishes 13th while uh, Chris Davis, our, one of our bigger movers of the night, up 20 positions after starting in 34th, comes home in 14th. Seba Cornez finishes in 15th, rounding out the top 15, while Chris Claude, the first car a lap down, finishes 16th. Ron Fitting and Chad Sander in 17th and 18th. While, there we are, Eric Papineau and Chris Custer make up the top 20, Matt. That's the top 20. 21st belongs to Alexander Gangler. In that uh, eight machine tonight, 22nd, Neil Pearson coming home 23rd, the 84 of Noah Hamilton. Mark Johnston in the 80 in a respectable 24th place position. Rounding out your top 25, the 88 of Michael Witt. Ken Ron, Anthony uh, Civigano, uh, Randy Belk, Paul Hill, Rich Jet, that's your top 30. Dalton Mobley, Randall Watkins, Diego Rodriguez, Tyler Sexton, Matt Mack in the top 35. And rounding out your back half of the field, Ethan Eckert comes home 36. Uh, on the 52 machine, he's going to come home 32nd. Richard Pruitt, 38th. And rounding out the field tonight of 39 drivers, the nine of Jeff Carson. Well, Matt, as we always say, another one in the books here <clears throat> in the SNN Cup Series. You'll have to excuse me. I've got a little uh, little phlegm build up from dinner. But, uh, you know, this race did not disappoint come the very end of it. I mean, you know, we had a long stretch there in the middle where, you know, I started to feel pretty poorly for the, you know, both the drivers and for the broadcasters, that's for sure. As uh, we were being assaulted in the booth and they were being assaulted on the racetrack, it was a long night. Yeah, it was a long night, but I knew at some point, you know, the talent in this series is just too good for a race to go, you know, just that sour or that far south per se. They got it righted. They got it back on track, and we finished on a high note. And yet again, another great performance by the Stacy Strong Cup Series. Yes, sir. And as we wrap up the evening, I want to thank everybody for making us a part of your evening, as always. And uh, because without you folks at home tuning in on your phones or your televisions, we want to welcome. We want to thank you for letting us into your homes for a few hours. And for myself, Dave Regal, my broadcast partner, Matt Mettler, and everybody else here on the Sim Racing Media team, I want to thank you one final time for letting us bring this action to you. And tomorrow and every day as you walk down the road of life, please don't play in traffic. Good night, everybody.